Network presents the Big 8 Game of the Week. Today from Memorial Stadium in Manhattan, Kansas, it's the Kansas Jayhawks versus the Kansas State Wildcats. Hello again, everyone. I'm Dave Armstrong. So happy to have you along for this one. And in 1969, some 20 years ago, then Kansas Governor Robert Docking came up with the idea of the Governor's Trophy. Well, here we are some two decades later, and we're still playing for it with all the intensity of a great college rivalry. Working with me today, Gene Hoshaver, the former assistant coach at both Colorado and Oklahoma. And certainly when you were with the Sooners, you experienced some great rivalries with Texas and with Nebraska. But this one doesn't lack that kind of intensity. It certainly doesn't. You know, the Oklahoma-Oklahoma State game is a big game, even though they have Texas and Nebraska, which is a big rivalry. But this game hits two teams against each other. They're playing for the state championship and for the bragging rights and uh, the ability to go out and be able to recruit. And KU and K-State are two teams that really mirror each other on the field. They love to pass the football. They certainly do. You can see that they rank second and third in the conference. And your better teams, uh, the Nebraska's, Oklahoma's, Colorado's, they're right down at the bottom. So we're going to see the ball in the air a bunch today. The Jayhawks won this battle real easily last year in Lawrence. And as far as today is concerned, you got to believe that KU would love to establish some kind of a running game. I think they're going to have to establish a running game. I think that the passing game is important because they certainly do throw it a lot. But Tony Sands could make a difference in the running attack today if he's able to move the football. Uh, they've got to be able to protect Donahoe because he's not as good under pressure and he likes to throw the short passes to his backside of the backfield and he likes to be able to every once in a while go deep but I think he's more accurate going short. The defensive strategy I think what they need to do is they're going to have to protect him. Uh, they're going to have to rush the passer some and play pass defense. I don't think that they can try to do one or the other they've got to be able to do both and gene we've talked about kansas state's michael smith and he is one of the best in the country michael smith certainly is one of the premier receivers in the big eight also in the in the united states he's an excellent clutch receiver they like to go to him in, on third down situations uh they like to go to him long i mean he's just uh, all over the field and really really excellent Charles got to have a big day today got to be able to throw the football got to be able to uh, negotiate the runs and be able to do things that will assist in, in helping them win the game Brooks Barta, of course, their outstanding uh, linebacker who's vying for Newcomer of the Year, is an excellent football player, and he'll make some young mistakes, but uh, he'll do a good job today. All right, Gene, we're looking forward to it. Last time KU won here in Manhattan, 1981. Well, we'll see if they can break that streak when we come back to Memorial Stadium with the opening kickoff. The Kansas Jayhawks taking on the Kansas State Wildcats. You can throw out the records in this one. They love to hit hard in this rivalry between KU and K-State. Our weather has improved overnight. We had six inches of rain fall on Manhattan last night, but right now we have an overcast sky. No rain now in the forecast, and our temperature almost perfect for college football at 68 degrees. As you see, the uh, rivalry, it began in 1902. It hasn't missed a step except for one year. The Jayhawks owned a commanding lead in this battle for the Governor's Trophy, including last year's 18-point win in Lawrence. Kansas won the toss. They have elected to receive. Now you take a look at Bill Snyder, his first year with the Wildcats. He brings an enthusiasm and exuberance to the program after guiding the offense of the Iowa Hawkeyes for the past decade. We're underway. The kick goes through the end zone, and the Jayhawks will start on their own 20. The quarterback of the Kansas Jayhawks, number five, Kelly Donahoe, now in his senior campaign. He needs 262 yards to pass David Hum to move into eighth place on the all-time Big 8 charts. He has really had an outstanding senior campaign. In the backfield, you can certainly look for wide receiver Quinton Smith out of Houston, a senior. He has already caught six touchdown passes this year. Up front is Chip Buddy, the center. He is one of the outstanding ones. He's only missed four snaps since walking on the campus of KU. The pitch back to Sands. He burrows ahead up to the 24-yard line. Defensively for Kansas State, John Crawford, the right tackle, the senior out of East St. Louis. He missed the spring with a broken arm, but he's fine now. 
defensively. Brooks Bart has already been the Big 8 Defensive Player of the Week once already this year in the Big 8 Conference, and he is an outstanding one, can hit very hard for a freshman. In the secondary, Eric Harper, a quarterback sack and 36 tackles. He'll be busy this afternoon. Donahoe to pass for the first time. Pass complete, first down. Pass caught by Kenny Drayton. Drayton gets it across the 30 up to the 32-yard line. And Gene, both of these teams won't hit you deep very often. They love to pass that short stuff underneath. That's what uh, Donahoe likes to do the best. He likes to throw that short out route or to his backside of the backfield or the tight end crossing. So we're looking forward to both of that today. We're just underway here in Manhattan. It's KU and K-State. What a great rivalry this has been through the years. Fans with a cut back at the line, but not a whole lot there. He only picked up a couple of yards. That was an excellent play by Barta. Bart got over there quickly. The pursuit from the defense got over there quickly. Just a simple toss sweep to the tailback. Chris Patterson, the linebacker, was in on the stop. There you see offensive statistics for KU this year, where they really favor the pass. When you've got a quarterback like Donahoe, why not? Second down, nine yards to go. Ball to 34. Again to Sam. Quick hitter up the middle. He fights for close to a first down. Across the 40, they'll mark it near the 41-yard line. Brooks Barta in on the hit along with Patterson. Watch the tailback here. Excellent block by the right tackle. He's cutting, dodging. Barta misses him, makes a little bit of a mistake, and then comes back and catches him from behind. He's going to do that today. He's going to make a few errors starting out, but he's got enough ability to recover very quickly. Third down, two yards to go. Ball near the 41. They need to get it past the 42. Sand has that and put him up. Bill Snyder shows the emotion as Kansas State falls behind the 37 with a 59 yard touchdown run. He's going to toss it to the tailback. We've got a great lead block by the fullback and some good open field running by Sands. He makes that guy miss him and then watch the block by number two, Quentin Smith, downfield, right in front. Quentin Smith puts that guy on his back and allows Sands to go in for the touchdown. Excellent run. Eric Harper had a hand on him, but he couldn't hang on. And a 59-yard touchdown run, Tony Sands. Snap is high, the kick is up, and the kick is good from Brad Fleeman. And with 12.51 left to go in the first quarter, our score, the Kansas Jayhawks 7, the Kansas State Wildcats nothing. Wow, what a start. Let's take another look at that outstanding run from number 24, Tony Sands. Great blocking by the right side of the line. Good lead block by the fullback. He just runs right out of that tackle, runs out of that tackle, and an excellent block by Quentin Smith downfield. Puts the defender on his back and allows Sands to go in for the touchdown. That's what we said we, they had to do earlier. They had to establish some kind of a running attack, and they definitely did it this first series of that. I think you keyed it, though, Gene. Not only was uh, it an outstanding run by Tony Sands, but a great block by Quentin Smith downfield that allowed him to go in for the score. On third and short, Kansas State had moved a lot of their uh, defensive players up towards the line of scrimmage, and once Sands busted through the line, he was uh, all the way through. There's Glenn Mason, his second year at KU. He comes from Kent State in Ohio, but he really cut his teeth on Buckeye football under the tutelage of Woody Hayes. And he's got to be happy right now as his Jayhawks have the lead 7 to nothing. Didn't take long for KU to score. Again, the 59-yard run from Tony Sands. And they move it 80 yards in just five plays. Brad Clemen will kick off for KU. He's the transfer from Wichita State University. Back deep for Kansas State. Dimitri Scott and Tyrese Hurd. Scott towards the top portion of your screen. So we're just over three minutes into this one, and KU has a 7-0 lead. 
A low kick from Cleveland. And it goes to Scott at the 10. Across the 25, looking for more room. There's a flag down. He finally goes down at the 35-yard line. We'll see what the flag is all about. Usually on something like that, it is against uh, uh, some sort of a blocking foul, and that's what it was, a clip. Carl Straw, the quarterback of the Kansas State Wildcats. Straw in his junior campaign, and he's really making the most of it. Already has passed for close to 1,000 yards just this year. In fact, last week against Missouri, passed for over 300 yards against the Tigers. One of the guys that Carl Straw loves to throw it to, we talked about him in the open, Michael Smith. Only one touchdown pass, but 49 receptions already this year. And he really has just been truly outstanding. Offensively up front, you look for Chad Faulkner, the senior out of Wichita. He's one of the co-captains of this Wildcat team. Patrick Jackson falls forward for about three or four. Hassan Bailey stopped him there defensively. Gary Otis, one of the guys you're going to look for from the Jayhawks, the junior college transfer out of Coffeeville Junior College. As far as the linebackers are concerned, they've got one guy that played the eight-man football in West Swinford and also looked for Dan Nubra out of Greenwood, Indiana, a walk-on, a tight end last year, and he's been great at linebacker. And Daryl Boykin may be just one of the best strong safeties in this conference. Nice move by Jackson as he gets it across the 20 up to the 23-yard line. Nubra there to stop it. Kind of unusual day. We expected a lot of throwing, and here they come out their first two plays from the line of scrimmage or runs. They're mark marking it up at the 28-yard line. It's going to be just a little bit short, I believe, for the first down. They'll bring the uh, sticks out to measure, but I think it's going to be just a couple of yards shy of the first down or a couple of feet shy. Well, maybe not. Let's see how they stretch it out. A couple inches, let's try. It's shy, but not by very much. 12.04 left to go, first quarter. Kansas Jayhawks are happy. They lead 7 to nothing. Bill Snyder is not. Snyder has realizes the task that's in front of him. Coming here to Kansas State University, they're really trying hard here at K-State to uh, do things the right way. And right now, his team looking at third and a couple of inches. Normally on third down, they like to throw it to Michael Smith, but you'd figure for a running play here. Jackson, the lone setback. And Straw takes it on the quarterback keeper, and he's got enough for the first down. Just a short quarterback sneak, nothing hard about that. Just straight ahead blocking with the guard in the center, and he ride, ran right behind his left guard. They're playing this this year on artificial turf, and we're all glad of that with all the rain that we had here in Manhattan. But uh, certainly they are talking here in Manhattan anyway of tearing this field up after this year, maybe next, and putting in real grass again. One of the improvements they're trying to make here at Kansas State University. Straw to throw. He's got his receiver, Frank Hernandez, who goes out of bounds near another first down up to the 34-yard line. Watch this on the monitor. The uh, quarterback fakes to the fullback. He blocks, and he's going to roll right. This is a real short out route to 83 Hernandez. Nice catch. Could have taken it upfield. Interesting, too, that Frank really saw where the sidelines were coming up quickly on him, and he took one giant step to his left and picked up a couple of more yards. So it's now second and very short. This is the kind of situation where you can maybe try one of your trick plays. Cross straight back. Lots of time. His intended receiver there on the far side a little bit overthrown for michael smith smith at five nine he can really get up in the air and sky with the best of them i think there are two receivers in the same area which is kind of unusual but he's trying to go to his favorite receiver up the sideline just a little bit too high for him he had him open through the defensive seam as uh, ku was playing in a zone defense that time but uh, he couldn't Find uh, his target now. K-State fumbles the football. 
And Jackson falls on it, and that's going to bring up fourth down to bring out the punting unit of the Wildcats. Straw lost the handle on the exchange from center and never really could find it. That ball might be a little wet still from the rain last night, uh, but there's no excuse for that, especially on a third and two situation where you've got a chance to move the chains. Now it's fourth and long. Chris Cobb in the punt for the Wildcats. He's averaging almost 40 yards per kick this year. It's a low kick. Matt Gay lets it bounce. And then he'll let it go inside the 20 down to the 15-yard line. That's where Kansas State will mark it. So an excellent punt for Chris Cobb as he kicked it away from Matt Gay. Gay had to uh, let it bounce. And by the time he could catch up to it, he just let it go on by. And Kansas will restart their offense back at the 15-yard line. You'll see purple in the crowd today and a lot of blue as well. This uh, near-capacity crowd here at Memorial Stadium. 58-yard punt from Chris Cobb, and uh, about 15 of that was a bounce. So a uh, fortunate kick for Cobb and for the Wildcats as Kansas again comes on the attack. Kansas with a 60-yard touchdown run from Tony Sands, and they lead the Wildcats 7 to nothing. Coming up next week, the Big 8 game of the week, Kansas State Wildcats take on the Iowa State Cyclones. Join us from uh, Jack Trice Field in Ames. One week from today, Saturday night, 10 Central, then again Sunday morning, 10 Central, right here on Prime Network. Ten thirty six left to go in the first quarter. Again, KU leading seven to nothing. Donahoe to throw. Tried one across the middle to Quinton Smith, but it was well behind Smith and incomplete. Might have been one that Donahoe is just throwing away. And just a little play action pass, I think, after that last series where they established the run. You come out first and ten and throw play action, play action pass. Good idea. Try to hit the receiver underneath. Defensively, you see that the, the Wildcats can be hurt by the run. They certainly were by Tony Sands in that opening series for KU. Not bad, though, against the pass. Here comes Sands again. That time they met him right at the line of scrimmage. Brooks Barta was there along with Chris Patterson and a pickup of only one. Not a lot of deception. It's just a toss sweep. Gives the linebackers a chance to react. Good block by the fullback. But watch Barta. He's being hit from behind and gets a hand in there on the play. Good play defensively by K-State. And now it's third and almost 10. We'll call it third and nine. Ball at the 16-yard line. Donaho forced out of the pocket. Now he looks to run with it. He is forced out of bounds by Patterson at the 20-yard line, well short of the first down, and now KU will punt for the first down. They put some good pressure on him, and that's what you have to do with Donahoe. You have to put pressure on him and force him to look for those receivers, and he's not great on the long passes. Trying to find somebody underneath, but the uh, Kansas State defense had excellent coverage that time, and he had to turn it up and run with it. What win there is, B.J. Lotion will be kicking into. The wind at about 10 to 15 miles per hour here in Manhattan. And the dangerous one, Michael Smith, back to get it. It's a low kick that bounces. Smith takes it on two hops, dances around, trying to get near midfield. There he goes. Smith fumbles the football. Kansas State, though, recovers at the 40-yard line. So great field position for the Kansas State Wildcats. Smith fumbled the football, but Kansas State was right there to pounce on it. And we're going to step aside with 9.35 left to go in this first quarter. It's KU 7 to nothing over Kansas State. State starts their offense at the 40-yard line with Gene Hoshaver on Dave Armstrong back in Manhattan. And Jackson runs forward for about three or four yards. Gilbert Brown, the outstanding freshman out of Detroit, stopped him there. 
to Gilbert Brown did a good job. He stuffed the blocker right in the hole, and the tailback had to run around him and uh, gave the other people on the defense a chance to pursue and get in there. So pretty much it's been all Patrick Jackson so far. Three carries for 12 yards for the Wildcats. Here comes Patterson again. Look out. He's got breaking speed as well. He gets it down to the 20-yard line, inside the 20, down to the 19. Hassan Bailey was there to stop him, or he might have gone in for the score. This is a great broken field run right here. Dips up inside, gets some good blocking by the offensive line, good blocking downfield by the tight end. Got by everybody with the last one. Patrick Jackson, the junior out of Columbus, Ohio. He transferred from Waldorf Junior College. He was a quarterback there. So watch out. He can throw the ball from the backfield. This time, they give to the fullback, Curtis Madden. He goes nowhere. Dan Nubra right there to meet him. Going up second and ten. Look at Madden. A sophomore out of Denison, Texas. And... K-State has done a good job recruiting down in that state. Many of their players come from there. Not this guy, Carl Straw. He comes from New Jersey. They've been uh, marking it back one yard. A loss of one at second and 11. Jackson again. He tripped forward up to the 15-yard line. Dan Nubra got a finger on him and tripped him up. But a game of about five or six on the play. And they'll mark it right at the 15. But it'll bring up third and six. Looks like their game plan is just to run right at them with the tailback, a little sprint draw action with the fullback leading through the hole. And uh, they've been blocking very well up front. And they've been executing pretty good. Doesn't that figure a team that averages 54 yards on the ground is trying to run it? Uh, and so are the Jayhawks. Both of these teams figured to pass a lot here this afternoon. So far, they're trying to establish that running game. A little pass here, or no, a draw play. Straw keeps it inside the 10, first down to the 9. That was a good call. They split everybody out except for one back in the backfield. And then uh, Straw started back real quick. And it's just a quarterback draw. Real simple play. Starts back. Good blocking by the line. Good blocking by the back. Paul Friday stopped him at the nine-yard line. But it's now first and goal for K-State as they try to get this thing knotted at seven. KU leads on a 60-yard touchdown run from Tony Sands. Clock is rolling with seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Just a little quick pop, pop play there, Dave, up Eric, inside. Their line is doing an excellent job of blocking inside the 10. Eric Gallen, a seldom used uh, sophomore out of Lakeland, Florida. It's going to show draw, and then they're trapping with the left guard. It's the 61 that the left guard pulled the trap. They showed pass with the right side of their line and then handed the ball to the back inside. There's a timeout on the field with 6.29 to go here in the first quarter. A pickup of four. It's second and goal from the five. Hey, those of you in the Rocky Mountain region can catch D. Dowis and the Air Force Falcons in action against the Army Black Knights next Saturday, live at 1 Central, 12 o'clock Mountain. Join Drew Goodman and Tom Graham on Prime Sports Network, an affiliate of Prime Network. Gene, are you noticing anything uh, on either team's offensive formations? Is something that they're trying to accomplish here in the early going? Uh, nothing that we haven't seen before. Uh, Kansas State, I think, uh, had, had run that quarterback draw a couple of times in the film that I had looked at yesterday. And uh, that's nothing different. But uh, they have run the ball a heck of a lot more than what I had anticipated. Kansas State took the timeout. They have two remaining in this half. We're glad to see the sun come out just a little bit here in Manhattan. Man, did we have some kind of a rainstorm last night, thunder, lightning. It really kept uh, most of us awake throughout much of the night. Six inches of rain fell here. but. Around three hours before the game, the clouds started to part, and we're looking at pretty much a, a clearing sky here in Manhattan now. Here come the Wildcats. First, second and goal from the five. Gallon and Jackson 
in the backfield for K-State. Jackson, not much running room around the right side. David Gordon was there defensively. Also, Roger Robin came up from his linebacker position, a gain of only one, and it's going to bring up third and goal from the four. Ron Mason looking on as his Jayhawks are trying to hold Kansas State to uh, no better than a field goal here. Michael Smith comes wide to the left. The pitch to Jackson, looking for a hole. Dives down to the two-yard line, maybe inside the two, near the one, but it's going to be short of the goal line, and now a decision for Kansas State. Darrell Boykin and Doug Terry are there to stop uh, Jackson short of the goal line. They're going to mark it at the two. Kansas State appears to be going for it, Gene. It looks like. I believe I'd take the three points here, but it uh, looks like they're going to try to get the touchdown. They've, they've come to play to win. Bill Snyder with the uh, headset on, calling the play. And the crowd now up on its feet on fourth and goal from the two. Jackson. No, he does not get it, and Kansas defense comes alive. The left side of the Kansas defense wasn't full, and it was just a simple toss pitch to the tailback. Pursuit gets there. There it is. Toss sweep. Watch number 68. Watch number 70. Great, great pursuit by the left side of that Kansas defense. And Doug Terry was there to make the initial contact, actually behind the line of scrimmage, and that stopped Jackson short of the goal line. In fact, he really only gained maybe a half a yard on the play. But Kansas backed up in their own end zone now with the ball at the two-yard line, but they're glad to have it with that 7 nothing lead. A give to the fullback, a head for maybe a couple of yards, Jody Killian, to stop him there. They don't want to do anything ball fancy right eight. here. They want to try to get the ball out to where the quarterback can operate okay, without being in the end zone. No chance of a safety, so they're going to try to get it out in the middle somewhere. One change for the Kansas Seahawks at fullback. Maurice Douglas is playing at fullback in the place of Maurice Hooks. Douglas, uh, a little bit smaller. They're hoping that uh, his hands coming out of the backfield can help Donahoe. And that is Douglas with the football across the five up to the eight-yard line before Anthony Williams could stop him. Stop by number 92, Anthony Williams. 4.20 to go in the first quarter. In case you just joined us. Tony Sands took it in 59 yards on a touchdown run for the Kansas Jayhawks, and they lead the Wildcats 7 to nothing in this battle for the Governor's Trophy. Again, it's been since 1981 since KU has won here in Manhattan. On a hold the throw, a quick hitter across the middle to Drayton, but it was behind Drayton who had a step on the defender. Drayton might have picked up 15 or 20 yards on the play, but the pass was behind him. And again, KU will be forced to punt. They just tried a little play action pass there, fake the toss sweep, and then try to bring Drayton over the middle. He's not afraid to catch the ball inside, and I think that's why they tried it. Just a little slant route inside that would have given him the first down. B.J. Lawson again to kick to the dangerous one. Michael Smith, who is waiting near midfield. Almost blocked in the end zone. Now we're going to have roughing the kicker. Smith gets it at the 44, but this is all coming back because Kansas is going to get the football back. Lawson was actually just almost killed in the end zone. He really thought he had a chance to block this thing. I don't think this was intentional, but he should have taken off a little further in front. He starts in the air, boom, right into the kicker. Maurice Henry, who has one block punt, was the guy that got him. Remember, if you touch any part of the football, you can do that. But Henry didn't get there in time. Lawson limps off. I think his angle was just a little bit too tight there. If he'd have been out in front a little bit, he'd have blocked out. Sometimes the kickers can uh, fake a roughing the kicker. There was no fake job there. That was definitely <laughs> roughing the kicker. I don't believe there was any fake about that one, Dave. And B.J. Lawson thankful right now that he is 6'3 and 225 pounds. A big guy taking on a... Maurice Henry is also not small at 6'2", 220. 
for Kansas gets the football back. They'll have it at the 23-yard line with 3.42 to go in the first quarter. A big break for KU. Kansas State was coming hard trying to get something going. We're going to step aside with 3.42 to go in the first quarter. And again, KU leading 7-0. Kansas with it at the 23-yard line, first and 10. Donahoe to run near the 30 at the 29-yard line. Eric Harper and Brooks Barta got him down there. Looks like he was thinking about trying to option pitch that uh, ball in this play. Just a little reverse pivot. Gives a little fake to the fullback. Coming outside with the ball. The tailback's to the outside of him. Pretty decent blocking, but good pursuit by the inside of that defense. Brooks Barta again. Donahoe's average for rushing does not look impressive, but they always take into consideration for the quarterbacks. Every time they are sacked, they lose yardage, so it's a little bit misleading. He can run pretty well with the football. Sands met and Powell behind the line of scrimmage by number 94, Ramon Davenport. On the stop. Davenport made a good play on this play. Just a reverse pivot, hand to the tailback pop play. But he fought the blocker off very well and stopped him behind the line of scrimmage. So a loss of one, it's going to bring up third down and a long five. Ball to 28 yard line for KU. It appears that Donahoe is checking off at the line of scrimmage. Pitch back to Sands. Again, nowhere to run. Sands' uh, percentage is starting to go down. Again, it was Davenport in on the stop. He was the first one to get him, and then he got a lot of help from his teammates, but it's going to, again, bring B.J. Lowson onto the field, and we'll see how he kicks now after being uh, run into by Maurice Henry. Lowson is back out there. That kind of surprised me, Dave. I thought they would try to throw the out route or maybe the tight end underneath something to get the first down uh, without running it. Lowson gets this one off, an end-over-end end kick. It's going to stop right near the 40-yard line. KU will down it at the 39 of Kansas State. With a minute and some change left to go here in the first quarter, Kansas State comes back on the attack, and there are going to be a lot of second-guessers wondering if Kansas State should have kicked the field goal earlier on. Well, they are enjoying good field position due to the fact that uh, they stuffed KU down at the two-yard line, and... I think most of the people here in Manhattan are glad they went for it. I think the, the feeling here is let's just go for the and see what happens. Go for the win. Draw to throw. Lots of time. Good job by the offensive uh, line to allow Straw lots of time to throw it to Michael Smith. Smith gets it across midfield before he's forced out by Doug Terry. Looks like the defensive secondary is playing way off. They're giving him a lot of cushion, and the quarterback has plenty of time to throw the ball. Threw, threw, threw it in there very well, but it just amazes me that they played him so loose on the corner. Clock stopped with, or clock is running now with a minute 23. I thought he got out of bounds, but they said he did not. It stopped momentarily while they moved the chains. The ball inside KU territory now at the 45-yard line of the Jayhawks again to throw and now Kansas State starting to do what they advertise. Smith went down on the wet turf near the 40. Pass might have been behind him anyway. Glenn Mason obviously respectful of this fellow Michael Smith. Glenn Mason the head coach of uh, the Jayhawks. This is what all you have to do is watch. He's unbelievable. He is as good a receiver as I've seen and that takes in uh, quite a few receivers that Mason has seen through the years, and to think that Kansas State got him as a walk-on from New Orleans. A lot of teams miss on Michael Smith. Give again to the fullback, Curtis Madden, who pulls forward down across the 40 to the 39-yard line. It's going to bring up third and four. Good block by Eric Herrick and Mike Orr on the right side of that line. Two freshmen, incidentally, Dave. Two freshmen in an offensive line of Kansas State. An interesting call here now for the Wildcats on third and four. Gene, do a little coaching for us. What do you call here? On third and four, I believe I'd try to throw an out route. I wouldn't try to run the ball. I'd try to get something quick to those receivers to give me the first down. 
Both receivers go wide to the right, and now so does Pat Jackson, the running back. Three receivers to the right, and they give it to the fullback. He dives forward for about three or four on the play. Curtis Madden, though, short of the first down. Now you've got a decision to make. Do you go for it here on fourth and two, or it would I be a, go for it. I think so, too. It's too long of a field goal, and no use punting in this uh, particular field position. I think they're going to have some time to think about it. The first quarter is coming to a close. And I think before they get this playoff, the uh, gun will sound. And that's it. First quarter comes to an end. Kansas State has the football, and they're moving. But Kansas has the lead, 7 to nothing, here in Manhattan. We'll come back in just a moment. Jayhawks fan has something to play about. Their Kansas team leads seven to nothing over Kansas State. Bill Snyder coming in from Iowa, the offensive coordinator of the Hawkeyes for 10 years, and he's trying some new offensive plays here for Kansas State and Glenn Mason in his second year at KU. Mason, uh, interesting strategy early on. He's done this now everywhere he's gone. He moved into the dormitory as they started fall practice. He said, everybody's making such a big deal about it. I don't think it's that great a deal. Woody Hayes used to do it at Ohio State. And he says, it's kind of fun for me to get to know the players and for them to get to know me on a more informal basis. He's one of the great young coaches in this country. So a uh, fourth down and two yards to go for Kansas State. Carol Straw so far is... 2 of 4 for 25 yards through the air. And on a 4th and 2. Gallon, the lone back. They fake to him. Straw on the keeper. And he's got enough for the first down. Near the 31-yard line. And now a flag comes into it. Might be a face mask here. And Straw readjusts it. Either a face mask or a late hit there. It is against the Kansas Jayhawks, and I move the ball closer. Just the, the quarterback goal. keep all the way. Just slide fake to the fullback, and he's going to keep it around his own right end. Good block. Late hit. Personal foul against the Kansas Jayhawks on the late hit. Yeah, pretty much no question no about question that. about that. Roger Robin came in and hit him after he was already down. So the second quarter starts with a bang for the Wildcats. They now have the ball down at the 17-yard line. First and 10 from the 17. Jackson falls forward. Not much. Wes Swinford got inside from his middle linebacker position and tripped him up before he could go too far. Jason Priest also there. Swinford wasn't fooled by that at all. He saw the thing coming directly at him, stuffed the blocker, and made the play. Swinford now wears number 58. He started the year with number 48. Then they retired that. It was Gail Sayers' number when he was at the Kansas Jayhawks. They retired that before the Oklahoma game. And Wes Swinford said, man, I've only played three games and already they're retiring my jersey. I must be doing something right. He was doing it right. Straw to throw. Well pattern to Jackson. Forced out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Three yards shy of a first down. Doug Terry forced him out there. Just a little pay action pass, a little fake to the fullback, and a swing pass to the tailback. And they cleared everything out with Michael Smith. Fake to the fullback. Drop back, throw it wide to the halfback. And there you see downfield Michael Smith, Hernandez. Jackson, the guy that got it. Jackson, one of those uh, guys that does it all, both running. He throws it. He's had one pass completion for 15 yards, and he's also one of the leading receivers on this Wildcat team. Third and three from the 10. Throw on the option. He got it away. Jackson to the two. <laughs> that was a great play. I'll tell you, that was just a down-the-line option. No fake at all, a down-the-line option and he got the pitch away. How did he get rid of that football? 
No fake. Down the line option. Lead with the fullback. He's going down. Out comes the ball. Pat Jackson's got it. Good block. Really good, really good run there by Pat Jackson. Watch number 84, Dan Newbury. He's got him wrapped up. He's got him going down. There goes the ball. Good piece of running here. First and goal for the Wildcats from the two-yard line. Jackson over the top. There's a flag on the play. Let's see what that's about. It was short of the goal line. A pickup of maybe only one, but it might be a penalty against Kansas State. I believe it's a motion penalty. I think they started too quickly in the backfield, Dave. They're going to rule it down at the one, but I think after they move it back, it's going to be first and goal from the seven. It is a motion penalty. That's the fullback, yeah. Mm -hmm. Number one, Eric Gallen moved early. Might be a situation where he didn't hear the snap count. Either that or he's over anxious. You know, you get down there inside the five yard line with a chance to score and everybody gets a little antsy. So that's really a bad break for the Wildcats as they push the ball back to the seven yard line. Now it's first and goal from there. Carl Straw, who's thrown for almost 52% of his passes this year, and he's thrown a bunch. In fact, he threw it 42 times last week against Missouri. They haven't thrown it much here this afternoon. They've been trying to run it instead. We'll see what they do here on first and goal from the seven. Straw to throw. Touchdown, Michael Smith! Good for his favorite receiver there, Dave. All they did was clear the outside out to let him run it out right away from it. A little fake to the fullback. Here we are. Straight back. Cleared the area. Michael Smith underneath on an out route. Great job, I tell you. That's a good catch, good throw. Good play call there. Despite all of his receptions this year, in fact, 13 last week alone, that's only his second touchdown catch of the year. David Kruger, the younger brother of Lon Kruger, the head basketball coach in for the point after. It's up and it's good and we're tied. With 13, 18 left to go in the first half, the Kansas State Wildcats have come back to tie the Kansas Jayhawks in the battle for the Governor's Trophy. We'll be back to Manhattan in just a moment. Now the Kansas State Wildcat fans have something to cheer about. Willie Wildcat leading the cheers as the Wildcats have tied the Kansas Jayhawks 7-all with 13, 18 to go here in the first half. David Kruger to kick off a low kick that Boykin picks up at the 15. He pulls ahead across the 30 to the 31-yard line. What a touchdown pass from Carl Straw to Michael Smith. He just backs out of there and they clear the outside with Michael Smith underneath. You know they're going to go to their favorite receiver, their best receiver in a clutch situation right there where they need the touchdown. Yeah, and the impressive scoring drive for the Wildcats, 61 yards in nine plays. And again, it was the seven-yard pass play from Carl Straw to Michael Smith. Pick back to Sam. Oh, a big loss. A Quincy Griffith on the stop, a redshirt freshman out of Brooklyn, New York. The man they call Spider-Man, well, he really got him in his web there. That's the nose guard. The center can't reach him. See, they've offset the nose guard to the left, and the center couldn't reach him, and the guard pulled. There was no way in the world that he wasn't going to make that play. A loss of 11 at second and 21. Big play for a Quincy Griffith. Donahoe rolls out of the pocket. Pass was intended for Drayton. A little bit too far, incomplete. It brings up third and 21. KU so far, just one of four passing for only six yards. Most of their offense has come on the ground and the big bulk of that, Tony Sands, 59-yard touchdown run. 74 yards rushing so far for KU. 
But you've got to figure that all but 15 yards of that came on that touchdown run. The Sands on the pitch back. There's a flag down in the backfield of KU. And it might be against the Wildcats. It might be a late hit on Donahoe. It is a personal foul against the Wildcats. That's an automatic first down. Absolutely. That was just, uh, that was not a very smart thing to do after he's pitched the ball to hit him. But a lot of times that happens because the defense, the defensive players in hot pursuit, you know, even if you want to get away from it, you can. So a big break for the Kansas Jayhawks. They had it third and 21. And about the only way they could get a first down without the, with the exception of a great pass play or a terrific run was to have some kind of a miscue by the Wildcats, and that's exactly what happened. Roughing the passer. Let's watch it right at the very top of your screen. Watch number five after he releases the ball. Mm -hmm. I think it was the oh, second was the hit second that hit. got him. Not the first one, but the second one. They'll give you that first hit right after you release. They, they think that's normal, but then the guy came in from behind. It might be a situation where he just couldn't he stop. Couldn't, he looks like he couldn't stop, Dave. And you see the penalties, which have really hurt both squads so far. Pretty close there, but a big one against the Wildcats. Keeps this Kansas drive alive. They push the ball up to the 47-yard line. Donahoe straight back. With time originally, but call this one a sack for the secondary. Griffith was in there defensively, along with that fellow, number 92, Anthony Williams. Let's watch it from the end zone. Pass protection broke down here. He's got plenty of time. But the Kansas, uh, Kansas State defense did a good job of covering those receivers and allowed that defense to collapse on him. A loss of four, it's second and 14, ball back at the 43. Now on the option, he keeps it. Now he's wrapped up at the 50-yard line. C.J. Masters wrapped him up and forced him out of bounds right at midfield. Clock stopped with 11.31 to go in the first half. We're tied at seven. The U Band is enjoying things so far here this afternoon in Manhattan. Is that the latest dance craze? Uh, Hitting the I'm not up on the dance craze here, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> fun. It's tied right now at seven. A lot of people in this uh, series will remember not too long ago when this thing ended in a tie at 17. The draw play to Sands. And he gets it down to the 44-yard line of Kansas State. And the flag came in from the far side of the field. This one, I think, is going against the Jayhawks. Motion on KU. And that's going to push Kansas back. It's going to bring up third and 12. And push it back on the other side of midfield. Glenn Mason trying to make progress with this Kansas team. He said, I'm really concerned about helping us win, but really what he would like to see them do is just make improvements week in, week out and execute the fundamentals properly. They've got a lot of young people. Uh, you look at two sophomores in their offensive line, one freshman, uh, a couple seniors, but basically just a real young football team overall. Kansas State has game chosen to refuse this penalty. It's going to bring up fourth and one. It would have been third and 11. They've chosen to refuse the penalty and bring up a fourth and one. And now there's some movement. I think offside on Kansas State. A Quincy Griffith was there again to stop Donahoe, but Donahoe might have been successful in pulling him off. I think you can see him jump early before the ball snapped. The player down on the field. Let's see if they short things down here. 10 50 to go here. It will be offside. That's the second penalty that keeps a drive alive for KU. Watch it again. It was Griffith that jumped. No, I don't believe it was Griffith. I think it was the it was the uh, the man next to him. 
72, I believe, 92. Uh, Anthony Williams was the guy that jumped in. It's pretty and hard for the nose guard to be offside because he's got the ball right in front of him, <laughs> although you do see that. But Every then, now and then. Yeah. Sometimes they listen in for that snap count more than they do. Hundelt, a senior out of Lenexa, is down right now trying to shake off the effects of the hit that he took. Hey, beginning this Friday, it's the new Senior Pro Baseball League featuring former Major League Baseball players over the age of 35, including Jose Cruz, Greg Nettles, Paul Blair, Bernie Carbo. Remember when he hit that home run for Boston in that 75 World Series? Hey, join Tommy Hutton and Gary Carter for exciting baseball action beginning this Friday live at 6.30 Central, 5.30 Mountain, here on Prime Network. Bill Hundelt will be helped off the field. He is walking, though, under his own power, and uh, they'll take care of him there. They're taking, bringing him over to the bench to find out what the problem is. Did you know that uh, he's an excellent power lifter? He's got like a 510-pound squat, 300-pound mm. clean and jerk. You wouldn't think he'd get hurt, would you? No. He's been pretty much uh, clean and jerk the team bus, but uh, he's injured right now. Give that time to Maurice Hooks, who is back in at fullback. He's normally the starting fullback for the Jayhawks. Back in there, and a nice pickup of around eight or nine yards down to the 30. Excellent blocking by the right-hand side of the line. Just a reverse pivot hand to the fullback. On the tackle, Good job of running. One of the oldest plays in football, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty simple. Just turn and hand it to that guy behind you. Second and short, it's second and one. Ball to 30-yard line. Hooks again. Both hands on the football down to the 25. It looked like a pinball going through that uh, Kansas State line. Eric Harper finally got him down. This is the same exact play that they ran a play before. Reverse pivot, hand to the fullback. Pretty good blocking by the left side. He gets a lot of this on his own. But I bet Coach told him, you wrap up that football and don't you fumble. Another first down for the Jayhawks. Hooks with a pretty impressive uh, yardage per carry at 4.8. It's time to Sands on the pitch back. He cuts back and picks up three, and that's about it. Eric Harper, again coming up from his strong face position to make the stop, and Sands limping just a little bit. Nine twenty-one left to go in the first half. We're tied at seven. Kansas Jayhawks are driving. They have been helped twice in this drive by Kansas State penalty. Once a big personal foul on third and twenty-one that kept the KU drive alive. Sands again, right side. Another first down inside the fifteen, down to the fourteen-yard line. Again, nothing very difficult. Just some real good blocking on the right-hand side. Lead blocked by the fullback. Good job of running again. Very good job of running by Tony Sands. Sands, the leading rusher for the Kansas Jayhawks. He's also caught five passes for 12 yards, and today an impressive day so far. 87 yards and just seven carries in that big 59-yard touchdown run. Again, they give it to Sands. Sands down inside the 10. They'll mark it near the nine-yard line. Elijah Alexander and John Crawford stop in there. That's a good job of pursuit by the Kansas State defense, the whole right side of their defense. Anytime you turn and pitch the ball to the tailback, you, you, know, you got a, a chance to draw a crowd there real quick. Now a timeout has been taken by the Kansas State Wildcats. K-State wants to talk it over. They take their second timeout of this first half as their defense uh, was having some problems picking up what Kansas was doing offensively. Coming up this week on Prime Network, it's the premier pro football playbook. Join Allie Sherman for an in-depth look at the regional and national matchups in professional football. Pro football playbook here's Saturday, November 4th at 6.30 Central. 5.30 Mountain on Prime Network. And Mark the ball at the 10-yard line. It's going to bring up 
second down, six yards to go. Tony Sands, we were talking about him earlier, Gene. He's one of the more colorful characters on this Kansas team. He wears a tuxedo to each and every game. Now, not during the game, obviously, but to, to the game. Uh, hence the nickname Tuxedo Tony. Also gets the obvious one of Quick Sands, and he certainly is very quick. He had 115 yards against Colorado last week, and he's nearing 100 yards already today. I tell you what, he is a good little back. He's not very big. Looks like he's strong and durable, and he's got great moves. But you saw him run out of two tacklers down here on the first touchdown, and uh, not very many people can do that. Five, six, 175 pounds. He is what you would term as wiry. <laughs> I think that's the terminology. Kelly Donahoe, in his senior campaign, uh, originally wanted to go to the University of Nebraska, was born there, always followed the Cornhuskers, but now he's found a home at KU and loves it there. Maurice Douglas, a straight dive ahead across the uh, right side for a pickup of four on the play. And it's going to bring up third and short. Third and two, the ball marked down near the uh, seven-yard line. Good block by Chip Buddy and Scott M. Wally. They did an excellent job of blocking straight ahead. Nothing very complicated about that play. Just a little reverse hand to the fullback. Chip Buddy last week. Missed the uh, final four snaps of the game after uh, 28 straight starts where he had not missed a snap. Pitch back to Sand. Tripped up near the line of scrimmage. Falls ahead for maybe two on the play. But the big play defensively was Eric Harper who came in. Had a good block by the fullback. Excellent. But look, watch him string it out. Watch the linebackers. Great defensive play there. Fourth and one, and KU is going for it. They need to get it to the four-yard line. And they do. Inside the four, down to the three-yard line, goes Maurice Douglas. Nothing fancy there, just bash them football as they take it down to the three, where it's first and goal. Just a reverse pivot hand to the tailback straight ahead blocking with a fullback leading. There's a big smudge up inside there, Dave, but they got the first down. Maurice Douglas, a sophomore out of Columbus, Ohio. Interesting how many players come from the Ohio area. Douglas again pulling his way forward. Stopped just shy of the goal line. They'll mark it near the goal line at about the half-yard line. He's got that ball covered up. He's not going to lose it down here, but the offensive line did a good job of blocking the C-77 on the bottom of the pile there. Second and goal from the one. Donahoe straight forward. Let's see after they get it all marked out. Touchdown, Jayhawks. The official had to make sure where the football was after Donahoe dove forward. And the Kansas Jayhawks have regained the lead over the Kansas State Wildcats. Let's watch the offensive line fire out. He goes right over the top. That's a good surge by that offensive line. On to try the point after. Brad Fleeman. Lehman now in his senior campaign with KU. He has hit 16 of 18 extra points. This one is good. 17 now of 19 for the year. Two for two in this game. And Kansas leads 14 to 7 with 6.04 to go in the first half. remaining here in the first half and Kansas has regained the lead on a one yard dive by Kelly Donahoe. Brad Fleeman will kick off now for the Jayhawks. So the Jayhawks have done it on the ground for the most part here this afternoon so far. The big run from Tony Sands of 59 yards for a touchdown in the first three minutes of the contest and then Donahoe 
Gates changes his seven-point lead again with a one-yard dive. The touchdown for Kansas State came on a pass play from Carl Straw to Michael Smith from seven yards out. Tyrese Hurds brings it across the 20 up to the 22-yard line. Kansas, again, was helped impressively in this drive by a couple of Kansas State penalties. Uh, certainly something that Kansas State will look at when they look at those game films and say, well, there's a personal foul here. There was an offside there that really cost us in that drive, but it certainly helped the Jayhawks. Carl Straw so far is four of six with one touchdown pass for 38 yards. And then we look for him to start trying to find Michael Smith some more. Pitch back to Jackson. He stays on his feet, goes out of bounds at the 28-yard line. They'll mark it near the 29. Paul Friday forced him out of bounds, but not after a pickup of seven on the play. And it's going to bring up second and three, maybe second and two now where they mark the ball. I tell you, he's not very big either, but both of these guys on both sides, he and Sands both are, are really tough runners. Patrick Jackson, an interesting story. He was an All-American quarterback in junior college last year, and they have asked him to change positions here at K-State. They have a plethora of quarterbacks with the Wildcats, with Carl Straw and Paul Watson. They had Gary Swim. He was hurt before the season even began. Nice cut there by Jackson. Jackson with a first down run up to the 37-yard line. That was a little counter play. That's a little different. You'll watch here the counter action by the backs. Reverse, fake to, fake to the fullback, give to the halfback, and you've got number 80, the end, that pulls around. You know, they they run that Iowa offense where they stand those ends up and use the ends and blocking schemes also in their offensive line. First down for Kansas State at the 36-yard line. Now Straw to throw. Lots of time, across the middle. Pass intended for Frank Hernandez, and it was bumped away. Daryl Boykin really laid a hit on Frank Hernandez and caused him to cough up the ball. I think there was a blown assignment here on the route run by the receivers because there are two receivers in the same area. Watch, they'll run into each other. Boom, there's Hernandez, and there's Patrick Jackson. One of them was in the wrong place. Frank Hernandez, a guy that will probably look at that and say, oh, I should have caught that. And Daryl Boykin, one of the outstanding players, a sophomore out of Kent, Ohio. He was a AP defensive newcomer of the year in the Big 8 last year. Quick hitter to Michael Smith. Roger Robbins stopped him, but they'll give him a gain of eight on the play. It's going to bring up third and two. Watch your tight end standing up, and it's just a, he's blocking inside, boom, and a quick slant to Michael Smith. They're playing him very loose in the secondary, and uh, they can get five, six yards every time they throw that. They got seven yards that time. It's going to bring up third and a short three, a long two. Clock now under five minutes to go here in the first half. Draw on the option. He keeps it. It's going to be close. He gets it up to the 46-yard line. It'll depend on where they mark it. Where they've got it marked right now, Gene, it looks like they have it by maybe the nose of the looks football. very close. He's going to bring in the sticks to measure. <laughs> Just all depends on where that guy's foot was. So we were pretty good at predicting this last week. And let's see if we're closing. I said nose of the football. It's See what happens here. What is that? Nose of the football. Oh, you got a great eye, I'll tell you. <laughs> Uh-oh, Wildcats and the Jayhawks not only fighting on the field, but off the field as well as the mascots go at it. <laughs> it looks like the Wildcats are getting the best of this right now. I wouldn't want to fight with one of those costumes on, I'll tell you that. That's Andre the Wildcat and uh, Hulk Jayhawk. Hawk Chalk Jayhawk. Yeah. First down for Kansas State at the 46-yard line. Pitches back to Gallon. He gallops up to near midfield. Back to cross midfield into KU territory at the 49-yard line. Roger Robin again in on the stop. 
Rogers' father, Robert, was the wide receiver for the Kansas City Hawks back in the early 60s. You may, may remember that name, Robert Robbins. Rogers is just one of the many guys on KU that's been asked to switch positions. He started 11 games at fullback a year ago, and now he is in at linebacker. Again, Gallon dances ahead. Close to another first down. This one down to the 44-yard line. We'll see where they mark it. This one might be just a little bit short. It is. It's about a half a yard short of a first down. Third and very short now for K-State. And the clock still moving with 3.20 left to go in the first half. And the Jayhawks lead 14-7. Quiet crowd so far here in Manhattan as their Wildcats trail by seven. Straw on the keeper along the left guard. And he picks up the first down and they'll stop the clock momentarily to move the chains. And now K-State has to start looking at that clock with the clock stopped momentarily at three minutes. They're going to bring in the uh, chains again. This one's definitely a first down. My baby, maybe the whole football. Maybe the whole football. That's right. Well, half the football. <laughs> you can't be. Totally you can't be right all the time. time. That's right. Yeah. But it was a first down for Kansas State. And again, Gene, they're going to have to start watching that clock a little bit. Still lots of time, but they only have one timeout left. They used two already this half. That's right. If they throw anything, they're either going to have to go for it all the way or try to keep the ball close to the sidelines where they can work the clock and stop the clock. And there's a look at big number 72, Gilbert Brown, the standing freshman, one of the prize recruits for KU. There goes Gallon trying to get out of the grasp of Wes Swinford. Still, he is close to another first down for K-State. It'll be a yard shy. Swinford stopped him, or he might have cut it outside. He looked and like he stopped. Away. And then breaks, breaks it to the outside. A good job of blocking. Good job of blocking up front. Good job of running, too. Pickup of nine on the play. It's second and one. Bill Snyder, let's see what he calls. He's got the headset on. He's raring to go here. The sun is starting to pop through here now in Manhattan. Hernandez goes in motion. Quick hitter across the middle. Alan Frederick, the tight end. He pulls it in. Darrell Boykin stopped him. They spread everybody out. Just a straight, quick, reverse pivot, fake to the fullback, turn and throw the tight end. Just a pop pass to the tight end. He's got to be covered by a linebacker with all of the receivers that they've got split out all over the place. Campbell, the third string tight end, actually makes the uh, catch on that one. And the ball now to 23. And Gallon didn't have anywhere to run that time. Ooh, <laughs> take it. Roger Robin there. Roger, Roger Robin really stuffed him right in the hole. He did a great job there. Yeah, and on Roger Robin's right hand, obviously there's a broken finger there, and he's really... I mean, that's a that's a John Madden type of football. Got He's got the stuff all wrapped up. Uh, it's either a broken finger or a blackjack he's carrying in there. <laughs> no gain. Second and ten. Ball still at the 23. Draw into the end zone. So Hernandez overthrows him. Looking for Frank Hernandez, who was well covered in the play. Doug Terry was there defensively for the Jayhawks. I believe I might have gone underneath to Michael Smith. He tried to go for it all the way. Actually, it's got him beat by a step. And the crowd wanted an interference call there. Looks like a good play defensively. Not only that, the ball was overthrown. I'm not sure that Hernandez really had a chance to catch it. Third down and 10 yards to go. Straw again to throw. Well, he's getting all kinds of protection. Straw now dancing around. Still looking for someone to throw it to. Goes across the middle and it is batted down incomplete. And the crowd wanted some kind of a pass interference. 
Al Jones was in the end zone sprawling for the football, but it was tipped, and once it's tipped, it's fair game. Really good job of protecting the passer here. Watch these linemen move. Watch him move with the pocket. He gets outside of it, and all of a sudden, whoop, let's pick him up again. Same play, second act over here on the left side. Great job. That might have been an interference call down there, Dave. It definitely looked like the defender interfered. David Kruger on for a field goal. This one from 38 yards. It's up, and it is good. David Kruger now four of eight in field goals, and that's his longest of the year from 38 yards. With 43 seconds to go, Kansas State has pulled to within four. It's Kansas 14, Kansas State 10. It was a good decision that time by the Wildcats. It would have been fourth and 10, and certainly you take the point. Anytime you get points on the scoreboard, you've got to take them, especially in that situation where it's long yardage. Definitely take the three points. All right, with the last 43 seconds here, do you look for the Jayhawks to fall on the football, or will they try to, to do something? Or does that depend a little bit on their field position after the kickoff? You're right. I think it all depends on where they get the football. If they're backed up, I wouldn't look for anything fancy. If they get it in good field position, they might try to go for it. David Kruger to kick off. Again, that was his longest field goal of the year. The previous long, 34 yards. And yes, he is the younger brother of Ron Kruger, the head basketball coach here at Kansas State University. A barefooted kicker. I've never understood how guys can do that, but more power to him. Not completely barefooted. He's got a piece of tape on his foot. <laughs> Especially when it gets cold. I mean, how can you kick the ball when your foot is just frozen? My foot hurts when I kick it with a shoe on. I don't know how these guys do that, but they say they're ready for it. The ball falls off the tee for the second time. Now they might bring someone in to, uh, they will. They'll bring someone in to hold it and make sure it stays on. Wind starting to pick up a little bit here in Manhattan. Now blowing at around 20, 25 miles per hour. And that's still a light wind by Kansas standards. Sometimes it blows as hard as 35 to 40 miles per hour. What wind there is, Kruger is kicking into. Last time he tried to squiver and he again goes that same route. Maurice Hooks picks it up though and a nice return of about 20 yards up to the 42 yard line. Kansas State an impressive drive of 57 yards on 14 plays and again the field goal from David Kruger of 39 yards. We're giving him credit now for a 39 yard field goal. Kelly Donahoe, we'll see what they do now. Kansas really has excellent field position with the ball at the 43-yard line, 39 seconds to go, and KU has all three of their timeouts. I think they can work the clock a little bit here on the sideline, and that's what he throws best. Donahoe instead hands it off to Maurice Douglas, his fullback. He gets it up to midfield, and that's it. And now they'll stop the clock. Kansas takes one of their three timeouts. Timeout on the field. The Jayhawks take a timeout. That only took a few seconds. Still 32 seconds to go here in the first half. Hey, Prime Network is your source for college hockey this winter. It continues this Thursday night as Michigan faces off against Bowling Green. Live at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central. Get set for another exciting college hockey season right here on Prime Network. Kansas Jayhawks trying to get at least a field goal here before they head into the locker room. They lead the Kansas State Wildcats 14 to 10. Tony Sands really got things started in the right direction for the Jayhawks with a 59 yard touchdown run on just the fifth play of the game. Then Kansas State tied it up with a pass play from Carl Straw to Michael Smith of seven yards. Donahoe then on a one yard dive to give Kansas a lead they have not yet relinquished. David Kruger came out with a 39-yard field goal, and that's the way things stand. 14 to 10, our score with 32 seconds to go in the first half. Donahoe hit his first pass for six yards, but he's been 0 for 3 since that time. He's now 1 of 4 for only eight yards. Donahoe to throw and a rollout. He's got his receiver down at the... 35-yard line, pass complete to Kenny Drayton. And they're close to field goal range now with that win behind Brad Fleeman. 
Plus, I saw him kick yesterday at practice, and he was booming them through there at over 40 yards. Again, a timeout taken. Kansas takes their second timeout. They have one remaining. That only took five seconds, 27 seconds to go. You would think realistically, Gene, that uh, Kansas would want to move the ball maybe five to ten yards more for uh, Brad Fleeman to have a better shot at the field goal. And then once you get it that close, you might as well take a few cracks at the end zone. You bet. They've got plenty of time here to do exactly that. And if they use the sideline, I thought the receiver there, I'm sure they were trying to get him out of bounds. He just happened to catch it a little shy of the sideline and had to go down to catch it. And you want to save that one time out just in case, right? That's right. You want to save that for if you've got uh, three seconds on the clock just to stop it enough to get your field goal team out and go for the three. That's the last thing that uh, KU wants. Flamin on the sidelines. Not really warming up yet. He figures there's still plenty of time. Flamin, uh, his story is one where he went to Wichita State University. They dropped football there with the Shockers. And he decided to then transfer to Kansas. And he's been with the Jayhawks ever since. This is his last year, a fifth-year senior for KU. Claiming an accurate kicker. Four or five in field goals with a long of 42. But with that wind at his back, and he's almost in range right now. The give is to Sands. He is ripped down after a game of only a couple. An interesting call there. And Kansas takes their final timeout. That kind of amazes me. <laughs> to run the ball up in there and take your timeout, I would imagine that you try to work the sideline. Well, they've used their final timeout. Now, if you do throw it, you better make sure that you get it somewhere. At least, a, if not a first down, then you better make sure that you get out of bounds because it would be very difficult with only 22 seconds to go to try to run another play and get that field goal unit out onto the field. Absolutely. That's the hardest thing, getting, getting the offense off and the uh, field goal team on. That'll take you plenty of time. The two options for Donahoe. Throw it far enough for a first down where they stop the clock to move the chains. Then you can just throw something out of bounds and stop the clock that way or throw it towards the sidelines and make sure your receiver gets out of bounds. You should have been a coach. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like job security a little, a little more. <laughs> I can say all those things, and if it doesn't happen, I don't lose my job. Donahoe towards the end zone. In and out of the arms of Quentin Smith and incomplete. He would have been out of bounds anyway, I believe. He just kind of floated the ball. He puts it up. There's a lot of air under that ball. It gives the defender a chance to break on the ball. However, he didn't get his hands on it. Just the receiver happened to be out of bounds. Receiver was out of bounds, and then he couldn't find the handle on it anyway. Let's see what they try here with 16 seconds. This is third and eight. This would be a 50-yard field goal from this point. Donahoe again to throw to Drayton. And it's picked up. Kansas State picks it off. So with 10 seconds to go, now you would assume the Wildcats would fall on it and go into the locker room. Down by Fort Marcus Miller, picked it off. He floats the ball, see, and it gives the defensive back a chance to break on the football. On a route like that, on the out route, you've got to throw a rope in there. It's got to be pretty solid to keep that deep in from getting a jump on it and being able to intercept it. For Marcus Miller, his second interception of the year. Last year, he led the team in total tackles of 102, and Kelly Donahoe with his ninth interception of this campaign. And it's hard to tell whether that cost them three points or not because uh, Fleeman would have been lining it up for a 50-yard field goal. There is a penalty flag on the play. Might have been a little uh, holding called against Kansas. And that might have pushed them out of field goal range anyway. Well, Kansas State declined that, and they'll take the football. 
And they'll run on the final play. Jackson almost got loose, but there's certainly a lot of Kansas defenders there to stop him. And neither team has, uh, well, Kansas State has a timeout left. They can take it if they want to. They choose not to. They'll go into the locker room. And our first half is in the books here in this rivalry between KU and K-State. And the Jayhawks lead by four as we head to the halftime intermission. With Gene Hoshaver, I'm Dave Armstrong in Manhattan where the Wildcats trail the Jayhawks 14 to 10 at the half. Big A Conference this year getting down to the nitty gritty as we look at those conference standings. Colorado, Nebraska, and Oklahoma are all fighting for that conference championship and for Colorado and Nebraska anyway, a berth in the Orange Bowl perhaps. Exactly, I'll tell you, this, you know, that game today down in Norman is not going to be a cakewalk by any means. I know that Colorado is quite confident, but you know what it's like when you go down to play in, in the snake pit there in Norman. And Nebraska, of course, has uh, got to play both of those teams also. So it's a, I think it's a real tight race right now. Nebraska and Colorado will square off next week in the Big 8 out in Boulder. That'll be a great matchup between those two teams. It's always a great matchup when you talk about the players of the week. And Let's take a look at who those outstanding athletes were last week in the Big 8 Conference. Player of the week is Nebraska cornerback Bruce Pickens. Against Oklahoma State, Pickens had seven tackles, broke up two passes, had two sacks, including this one that forced a fumble, which Pickens recovered. Big 8 Offensive Player of the Week is Iowa State quarterback Brett Oberg. Oberg set four school records in the Cyclones' three-point loss to Oklahoma. He had 449 yards in total offense and threw for 411 yards on 48 attempts, all Cyclone record. He also threw four touchdown passes, which tied the school record. Prime Network salutes Bruce Pickens and Brett Oberg, the Big 8 Players of the Week. Brett Oberg really had an outstanding afternoon against the Oklahoma Sooners. I know that didn't make Gary Gibbs happy to see his defense being riddled like that, but uh, right now in this game, it's pretty even. The Kansas Jayhawks leading the Kansas State Wildcats by just four at the intermission. We'll come back. It's homecoming here in Manhattan, and we'll be back with more, including our statistical story of the first half in just a moment. You're taking a look at the hills of Manhattan. It almost looks like Boulder if you close your eyes and uh, imagine just enough. It's the little apple of Manhattan and Kansas State trailing Kansas 14 to 10. The sun is shining now here in Kansas. Wildcats kick off. Kruger will see it go into the end zone. It was almost out of bounds. <laughs> but it went into the end zone just over the pylon, and it'll be first and 10 for the Jayhawks from the 20-yard line. Kelly Donahoe, again, the quarterback for KU. Tony Sands outstanding in the first half, 96 yards rushing for the sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale. Kelly Donahoe in the first half hit his first pass, and then really went in a drought. He missed three, hit one, and then had one intercepted as well at the very tail end of that first half. So Kelly Donahoe, not very impressive through the air in the first half for the Jayhawks. On the option, two Sands. Sands finds his seam and gets it up over the 25 to the 26 yard line. And Tyreek Hurds herded him down there. That was just a little option play. Down the line and watch Tyreek Hurds. He's gonna get stock blocked and come off the play very well. Marcus Miller is being helped up, number 16 for Kansas State. He is now being helped off the field. Seemed to be shaken up on that play, twisting his back just a little bit. Now he jogs off, and he should be back in in short order for the Wildcats. They need him. He's the guy that intercepted the pass. And look at Sands now. 16 carries for 113 yards. He is over 100 yards again. That's a little bit misleading. He is now at 102 yards. He lost some yardage in that first half, so officially 102 yards now for Tony Sands and 115 last week, so he's off to a great start. Maurice Douglas is met shy of the 30 at the 29-yard line. 
Chris Patterson stops him there, and it's going to bring up third and one. Chris Patterson did a great job on that one. He just met him right in the hole. There's nothing fancy. It's the same thing that we saw the first half. Just a little reverse pivot, hand the ball to the fullback, or toss it to the tailback. Third and one. Let's see what the Jayhawks do here from the 29-yard line. They give it to the fullback, Douglas, who rolls ahead. They're going to mark it across the 30 to the 31-yard line. He picked up enough for the first down before they shoved him back over to the 29. Patterson again in on the stop for the Wildcats. But they'll move the chains, and it's first and 10 for KU at the 31. Just starting here in the second half, and well, that sunshine is a welcome relief here for the folks in Manhattan after six inches of rain in the first half. Clouds still hovering over Memorial Stadium here in Manhattan, but certainly uh, it's great to see the sunshine again. It looks like off to the west, the clouds are breaking away. Tony Sands cuts it back inside. John Crawford got a mid on him and stopped him after a pickup of two. It's second and eight. John Crawford did a great job on defense that time, Dave. He just dodged the guy, jumped around, and made the play for a slight game. Donahoe, the quarterback, is looking right into the sun as he brings the Jayhawks up to the line of scrimmage. Second down, eight yards to go. Ball at the 33. Donahoe again on the option to Sam. Fans are on the far side for a gain of five. And it's going to bring up third down and a long three, maybe four yards to go. And where they're marking it, it's four. It's just a little down the line option play. Quarterback from the step back, fake to the fullback, and pitch it quick to the tailback. Good stock block at number 77, Chris Perez out in front of the play. Third down and a long four for KU. Donahoe, two pass. Pass is incomplete. On the far sideline. Pass was intended for Quinton Smith. He couldn't hang on, and Kansas will punt it into the wind. Hey, Donahoe's going to have to put a little more zip on the ball. He's kind of floating the ball, and he's giving those receivers a chance to get to the sideline, and he's also giving the defender a chance to break on the ball. B.J. Lowson, who was rushed up by Maurice Henry in the first half. That's Michael Smith back deep for K-State. A low kick into the wind. Takes a KU bounce, and now the Jayhawks will down it. I think it hit somebody at the 32-yard line. Yep, that's where they're going to mark it. Somebody hit some, one of the Jayhawks at the 32, and Kansas State will start there. Take a look at Carl Straw. He had a pretty good first half. 6 of 11 for 60 yards but didn't throw the ball nearly as much as many anticipated. Last week against Missouri, he threw it 42 times. This week, so far, only 11. Let's see how they come out here in the second half. The wind at their back. And good field position at the 32. They give it to Jackson. Cuts in at the line of scrimmage around the right side, and a gain of four or five on the play. Gilbert Brown got him. I tell you what, it's kind of hard to see this guy if you're playing defense. He's so short. Bang, makes a good cut, good blocking up front by the offensive line. And gets dragged down by the, by, uh, from behind. He's an impressive looking back, Pat Jackson. Who now goes and lines up as a wide receiver on the right. The single back is Eric Gallin on second and four. Allen gets it and noses his way in close to a first down up to the 42-yard line. Roger Robbins stopped him there, but where they're marking it, it's a first down for the Wildcats. Number 44 there, Roger Robin looking over to the KU sidelines, getting the defensive call. Roger just a sophomore, again, new at this position, the fullback last year. Intended for Jackson, he had it, but could not hang on. 
Okay, good pass protection again by the offensive line. He backed straight out of there. Nice throw, just a little low. Pat Jackson can't get back to it quick enough. There was a flag on the play. It goes against the Wildcats. They didn't see the flag initially. It might have been holding against K-State. Well, these two teams just love to play each other. Not only football, basketball, any sport. It is holding against KSU. I believe it's a left tackle here that gets called for holding. So he reaches, yeah, he's got his jersey over the top. <laughs> he's grabbing cloth there. You can't do that. That's Mike Orr trying to hang on to Lance Flashbarth. No, well, he did, but the official saw him. So now it's first down, 19 yards to go. Straw again. Back to pass again with time. Throws it across the middle. And the pass is incomplete. Pass was caught by Al Jones, but then as he hit the turf, the ball came up. I'll tell you what, Hassan Bailey and Paul Friday also made a good play. They kind of knocked the ball loose. He's got some other people that are open, too. Fires the ball. He's got it. Ball comes loose. Carl Straw, a little bit unfortunate. He's had two of his passes dropped here in the third quarter. And Straw now just 6 of 12 on the afternoon. Second and 19. much room to run as Gilbert Brown came up from his nose guard position. Gilbert watch Brown, this guy. smell that all the way. You He's watch almost this. 300 pounds. Boom, right from the nose guard. He sees a quarterback dropping back, dropping back. Uh-oh, screen pass. Does a good job. Boy, he can mogate there for a big guy. 6'4", 295. 6'4", <laughs> 295. Uh, that's hauling a lot of weight around there, Dave. I bet you you can feel the earth move as he's coming <laughs> after you on a play like that. You could hear him breathing. Third and 17 for K-State. Michael Smith tried to turn around in midair to make the grab, and he could not come down with it. The pass a little bit behind him. Okay, those are the passes that he's been able to catch in the past, but you're right, the ball was thrown behind him. And again, Straw is looking to Mike all the way. Normally, he would have that one. Straw's got to look downfield at some of his other receivers because he's got a couple other guys that are wide open. It's only the second time for Chris Cobb. His first one outstanding. It's a high kick with the win. Forces Matt Gay back to the 18-yard line. Gay then pretty much ran into his own coverage. Matt Gay, a return of about six yards on the play. A punt of 48 yards for Chris Cobb. We're going to step aside with 10.03 left to go here in the third quarter. It's still Kansas 14, Kansas State 10. Well, we're nearing Halloween, and that guy's ready. That is not one of the starting players for the Wildcats. This is one of those fans. Pass from Donahoe, intended for Kenny Drayton. He took one hop and hit Drayton in the shin. He's not throwing the ball as accurately as he has in the past from the short. Donahoe, normally 56% pass completion, but today, just two of nine for only 23 yards and an interception. That's because they've been working on the running attack all week. Huh? And they've done a good job of that. Tony Sands over 100 yards again today for the Jayhawks. Second and 10 at the 25. Sands. Flag comes flying into the pile. Sands picks up four. Anytime you see that guy throw the flag, it's a holding penalty. Chris Patterson makes the stop, but it was interesting in the first half. Kansas State had a penalty against Kansas that they declined and made it fourth and one instead of third and 11. And uh, KU went on and got the first down and then went in 
And so it's interesting that uh, they refuse that. I'm sure they'll take this one. That's the offensive center. Chip Buddy's got him by the jersey again. Definitely a hold. Well, they'll take that one. Backs up the Jayhawks 10 yards, and it's going to bring up second and 20. Chip Buddy. Those visors, that's something new to uh, football these days. They all look like Darth Vader when they come out. Seems like most part, for the most part, they're always that tinted, too. They're not just clear. In the yeah, they don't want you to see their eyes. <laughs> well, for the protection, Sands on the draw. Sands still on the draw. Sands all the way up on a gain of 13 up to the 29-yard line. That was a good good call right there. Watch him blow right by everybody. Got good pass rush. Everybody's coming at him in an excellent block by number 26. And a good run by Tony Sands. Good job, good call. Fans now averaging almost six yards per carry, 123 yards on 20 carries so far this afternoon. A big one again, a 59-yard touchdown. Donahoe on third and six. It's time to throw it. Let's see, yeah, they throw a fly on that one. From behind, C.J. Masters. He was uh, kind of blanketing Quentin Smith a little bit too much, and three flags came in on him. They tried to clear out the, the secondary there and, and uh, run the crossing route underneath to pick up the first down. And he, he was definitely hit before the ball got there. Well, you'll be able to have a great look at it here as Quentin Smith goes across the middle. And there he is, C.J. Masters, coming in there. And the crowd here felt like the ball was already by. But three officials threw the flag on it, and they all saw it. And from our vantage point, it also looked like it was pass interference. And they move the chains. It's first and 10 now for KU at the 39-yard line. Penalties have certainly been a problem for Kansas State here this afternoon. Sands on a similar play to that touchdown run. Game seven this time up to the 46. That was a good block by the pulling guard there that time. Scott M. Wally, number 65. Watch the pull on the monitor. Right guard, 65. Pulls around looking for somebody to block. Pull back leading up through the hole. He gets one. There he is. 65. Good block. Good run. Gain of seven, it's second and three at the 46. Maurice Douglas, he stopped shy of the first down. There defensively for Kansas State is Chris Patterson. This is a good tackle by Patterson, watch this. Boom, fills that hole, excellent, excellent job. Grabs the hold and pulls him back. They're going to measure. It looks to be, what do you think? Four <laughs> inches I'm counting shy? on you, what do you uh, think? I think About three, four inches shy. Three to four inches shy of the first time. I think you're right. That's about that. <laughs> You know, everybody, <laughs> everybody has to say, how does he do that? I have no idea. I just You can tell by kind of looking at the yardage uh, on the field. And, uh, last week, we had the advantage of it being directly in line with where we were. And, Did you uh, do some surveying work while you were young? <laughs> Are you a good putter? I bet you're a good putter. Um, you got to be able to line it up. Yeah, I can line it up. I just can't hit it. <laughs> it's hitting That's it in the problem. hole, right? Yeah, lining it up is no problem. 8.13 <laughs> to go here in the third quarter. Kansas leading by four. And sunshine has gone away again here in Manhattan. Third and a couple of inches. And Donahoe on the keeper gets that and more. Across midfield down to the 49-yard line. But I tell you, those linemen on both sides are huge. Mm -hmm. They are huge. And they had a good surge by the offensive line. Watch this surge. They come off the ball, bang, like a wave, and he just gets right behind them. Like putting a Volkswagen behind two Mack trucks, huh? <laughs> Donahoe's dive, he dove in for a touchdown earlier in this contest. Uh, that dive has got him a first down, but keeps the drive alive for KU. Now there's some movement, but 
It looked like that play was kind of funny. It uh, never really did get going. <laughs> no flags on the play. There was all kinds of movement for both teams. Sands finally got it. I'm not sure he wanted it. Brooks Barter stopped him at the line of scrimmage. Watch the defense. They'll jump off sides, then they'll get back, then they'll jump off sides and get back. I don't see anybody on the offense moving, but... Even the offensive line didn't come off. The center snapped it real quick, and nobody came off the ball. That was a delayed action, no question about it, and a loss of one for Tony Sands back inside of KU territory. Sands on the draw. Sands close to another first down. He'll be a yard or two shy of that. Inside K-State territory at the 41, Chris Patterson and Brooks Bart on the stop. Good blocking by the right side of the line. Chip Buddy, Scotty Wally, and Bill Hundo. Good running by oh, Sam. He is tough. I'll tell you, he takes a beating out there. He is tough. Sam so far today, 23 carries for 153 yards. Well, we talked about it at the top. They needed quick sands, and they've certainly gotten that. They sure did. Maurice Douglas. Good effort by Maurice Douglas there. He gets the first down. Good effort. Third and two. Uh, gets it down about a gain of four or five on the play. And now the Jayhawks are strangling that Wildcat. <laughs> the cruelty to animals almost. <laughs> Oh, and look at the fans starting to throw paper. I tell you, it's tough to be a mascot these days. Another first down for KU at the 37. And Maurice Hooks checks in for KU. The give is to Sands, though. He is, runs into a bottleneck at the line of scrimmage and then cuts it outside and falls forward for a couple. Dimitri Scott and John Crawford were there. Yeah, they did a good job of stuffing things up inside, but still Sands is able to get a couple of yards because he bounces off the blockers, keeps his feet moving, keeps them churning, good strong legs. He's a good runner. A 59-yard touchdown run, the longest from the line of scrimmage this year for KU. Sands again. This time inside the 30, Tyrese Hurd stopped him. It's going to be close to another first down. Again, they're going to be about a yard shy. It's going to bring up third and one. I tell you, Tyrese Hurd, the last two times they've run that play, has made the play because he's come off the stock block. He's been able to fight it and get inside and make the tackle. Well, with Kelly Donahoe struggling, Gene, it's a good thing for KU that Tony Sands is not. Well, I tell you, they give him the game ball today for sure. Give him two of them. KU on third down. Three of nine. That one's good, though. Maurice Hooks. And KU just marches along down to the 25-yard line, goes Hooks. You know, I'm surprised they haven't run the ball more during the year because Hooks is a good, solid inside runner. And uh, Sands is an excellent outside runner and inside runner. Sands has certainly proven that today. And Maurice Hooks, the junior out of Omaha, comes from a football-playing family. His brother Mike played at Iowa. And I'm sure that Bill Snyder, the head coach of the Jayhawks, or the uh, head coach of the Wildcats, remembers him. On the option, Donahoe is hit behind the line of scrimmage by number 59, Jody Killian. Killian, the redshirt freshman out of Belle Plain, Kansas, who added 25 pounds in the weight room while he was redshirting. Little counter option with the fullback leading. Second 11, 26 yards. A loss of one, it's second and 11. Well, KU has really marched it. This thing started at their own 20-yard line. Donahoe trying the fake play, but I'll tell you what, Ramon Davenport would hear nothing of it. Davenport did not buy the fake. He tried to fake. All the backs are going one direction. Linemen are blocking in that direction, and he's going to come out naked. But Davenport did a good job. He didn't go for the fake. He didn't get sucked inside. He did what they tell him to do. Stay at home and don't get beat on the quarterback coming back around or a reverse play coming back to your side. What that did was two things. It makes it third and 20. Not only that, but it probably pushes KU out of field goal range. 
Ball back at the 35-yard line. Donahoe to throw. Over the middle, his pass was intended for his tight end, John Baker, and he just couldn't catch up with it. That brings up fourth and 20. And that brings on the punting unit for Kansas. Glenn Mason not happy with the, the way his team's drive stalled at the end, but they certainly ran a lot of the clock. Just 3.08 left to go here in the third quarter, and they've had it this entire time pretty much. They sure have. That's unusual for them to take that much time off the clock with running plays, isn't it? Losen's kick, a high one into the wind. It takes a bounce and goes into the end zone. Losen trying to down it inside the 10, but he couldn't do it. With three minutes to go here in the third quarter, our score remains Kansas 14, Kansas State 10. Wildcats trying to toot their own horn here as they try to come from a four-point deficit. Kansas leading by four. First and ten for the Wildcats. Sun back out again at the 20-yard line. Pass complete to Al Jones. Jones bowls his way up to the 35-yard line. Darrell Boykin got him down. Okay, this is a good play. Just a short spin around, what we call a pop pass. Turn it one, two, and throw it. Great, great throw. Al Jones from Overland Park. He said he wants to be either a broadcaster or a model. Yeah, that's pretty pretty much my life goal, too. <laughs> that's kind of what you do, isn't it? <laughs> well, I never do the modeling part. A bad exchange, and Carl Straw just has to fall on the football. Loss of a couple. Carl Straw. And the Wildcats and the Jayhawks are having some fun on the sidelines. Willie the Wildcat. Hey, he could shoot the basketball. You see him in a Is that right? basketball uniform. Willie the Wildcat with that big head on can really do he it. Really pump it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Taking a look at Toby Lawrence, a second string redshirt freshman left tackle from St. Joseph, Missouri, being helped off. Boy, I tell you, both of these teams so very, very young. We talked about it last time when Kansas played Oklahoma that uh, one of the things they have to worry about is diaper rash. They're that young. For Kansas, you know, you alluded to it in the first half, Gene, but out of the 102 players, 45 of them are freshmen, and 55 freshmen or sophomores of the 68 scholarship players. Kansas State equally as young, although they have recruited some more junior college players, but a lot of new guys on this Wildcat roster. Draw to pass. Little screen pass out to Eric Gallon. Gallon now looking for some room to run. He runs into Roger Robin at the 40-yard line. See, that's what he should have done on the last two long passes of the series before, is go to the underneath guy. He's looking downfield. Everybody flushes out deep. He's getting pretty good protection from his offensive line. Nobody open downfield. That's it. Throw it off to the safety valve. For Carl Straw now, 9 of 16 for 83 yards and one touchdown. A minute and a half to go here in the third quarter. Straw again to throw. Look out, he was feeling some pressure there. From Kansas State's David, or from Kansas, David Gordon, number 82, and Straw's pass goes incomplete. This is what makes a quarterback throw the ball away, throw it sideways when he feels that pressure, and then he's got to look downfield to try to find one of his secondary receivers. Kansas State forced to punt the football away. Cobb's had a great day so far punting, one of 58 yards and one of 48. This one again with the win, lots of time, and a high spiral. Wow! That one's going into the end zone. A 59-yard punt from Chris Cobb. Boy, his average today, absolutely spectacular. 58-yarder, a 59-yarder, and a 48-yarder. Hey, coming up next week on the Big 8 Game of the Week, these Kansas State Wildcats take on the Iowa State Cyclones. Join us from Jack, Jack Trice Field in Ames 
One week from today, Saturday night, 10 Central, then again Sunday morning, 10 Central, right here on Prime Network. The Kansas will restart their offense at the 20-yard line with just a minute 15 to go in the third quarter. This game has moved right along. Dave, you know what really hurt Kansas State on that last possession was the fumble. I mean, you look at the other plays in that series, but they lose the ball, or not lose the ball, but they fumble the ball, lose it down, and then they got to come back and try to play catch up. Some of those uh, mistakes have really been costly to Kansas State. They kept one KU drive alive with not one, but two penalties. Glenn Mason, I'm sure, happy about that. But right now, Mason trying to figure out a way to put some distance between his team and the Wildcats. KU leading by just four. See, the difference will be, you know, the, the silly mistakes that you make, the penalties, the fumbles, uh, wrong decisions by the quarterback. Those things are the things that really kill you when you get back looking in retrospect at the game after it's gone. One thing that the Cats have to not look forward to in the fourth quarter, they'll be moving into the win. Sam right over the middle for a pickup of just a couple. Dimitri Scott met him there. Also getting up off the pile is Robert Hubble. I tell you, watch this. Comes from behind the line. Defensive back on the corner. Once he sees that ball pitched that deep in the backfield and he's up on the line of scrimmage, he's got a chance to go in hot pursuit and make the play. Pickup of two. It's second and eight. Sands. 26 carries for 165 yards. There he goes again. Again, it's Scott who comes in from the outside. Almost an identical play. That was not a replay, folks. That's just the way it looked. That's what they're doing. When they go two tight ends, they're putting the corner up on the line, and he sees the pitch go away. I mean, their ball's not going anyplace else. Ball's boom. Hand it off. There he goes. And it's deep enough in the backfield to where when a tailback gets, uh, tail gets the ball, Dimitri can come right across the line of scrimmage and cut it off before he gets to the line. Now Tony Sands is limping just a little bit. I'm not sure if it's cramps or just what it is. That's the end of the third quarter. Our score, Kansas 14, Kansas State 10. When we come back, KU will have it third and four from the 26th. We'll be back to Manhattan in just a moment. There's a great fan here watching some college football, watching Kansas, Kansas State. One of the great rivalries in college football. These guys just love to play to him. <laughs> Isn't that great? He's happy, wasn't he? Kelly Donahoe, before today, look at that, and today, just two of ten, and he's really run into some problems. His last five passes, 0 for 5. Well, he completed one, but it was to the opposition. It was an interception. But Kelly Donahoe, Donahoe is struggling today. Donahoe is uh, now going to have the wind at his back though he'll throw with the wind Donahoe across the middle that was caught wow what a catch from Quentin Smith we'll have to look at this again but Quentin Smith says yeah I caught it in the air and the officials are conferring about that it is a catch I tell you what, that's a great catch. Watch this, good, good protection, good protection, and a good throw. He finally fires the ball in there. It's barely tipped, but he does catch that football. Sure that's does. a great job of concentration. Well, we get a great view of it here. See that ball is tipped just slightly. Great catch. Oh yeah, he great got it. concentration. No question about it. Ooh. James is finding a quick hitter up the middle. Quentin Smith, the senior out of Houston. This all in one game. Look at that. One game against the Louisville Cardinals. I'm sure Howard Schnellenberger has seen enough of him. The National Player of the Week after that. And why not? Quentin Smith just made a terrific catch. Total yards in his touchdown. Twice as many as anybody else in the Big Eight. Six touchdowns. <laughs> Brooks Barta 
making the stop. Jody Killian also in there. Hatchet, the ball carrier. Frank Hatchet is giving Tony Sands a breather. Yeah, he reaches out. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He kind of turned him real quick and usually don't turn him like that with a jersey. Third and five again for KU. KU five of 12, third down conversion. Donahoe rolling out, has some room to run. Oh, Ellis had a hit, taken off by number seven, Tyrese Hurd. What's okay, this, Tyrese Hurd is tough. He is tough. He's one of three seniors in the secondary. Donahoe comes out with a football, decides he's going to run, tucks it up, and all of a sudden, yow! Great play. You want to look up the definition of clothesline in the dictionary, that is it. That picture would be in there, right? B.J. Lowson, the punt. A high one. This one's going into the end zone. Well, maybe not. Kansas is going to keep it out of the end zone. A fortunate bounce for B.J. Lowson. It hit at the one and bounced backward. That ball looked like it was end zone bound all the way. Watch it when that nose comes down on it, then it takes a different hop. And that's what you try to do when you put that ball. Get the nose to come down where it'll bounce backwards rather than... There you go. A bad field position for the Kansas State Wildcats. They start with the ball at their own eight-yard line. 12.48 left to go in this one. And Kansas leads by four. Still anybody's contest. Kansas State trying to come off that loss to KU last year where they lost by 18. Eric Gallon, he has run hard so far here this afternoon for Kansas State. A pickup of eight on that play. Good job. Good job of running. Good job of blocking. He looks like he's running kind of tentatively in there, but I think he's just trying to pick his holes. But see the good blocks up front. Good block by number 90. Just keeps going, keeps turning. Second and one, a pickup of nine for Eric Gallon. Second and very short. Let's see what Kansas State decides to do here. Just get the first down, or will they try something here on second down? Jackson takes it over for the first down, up to the 20-yard line. Nothing fancy. Another first down. They'll move the chains as the ball goes across the 20 to the 21. I don't think either one of them are trying to trick each other today. They're just trying to hammer it right at them in the running game, and then every once in a while mix a little pass in there. We're in Manhattan. Kansas State is trailing Kansas 14 to 10. Kansas scored less than three minutes into the contest and a 59-yard run from Tony Sands, and they have not trailed in this game, although a piss, uh, pass from Carl Smith to, or from uh, Carl Straw to Michael Smith tied the game. It's been pretty much KU, and they lead by four. 11.54 left to go in this contest. Jackson again on the run. He picks up just a couple. It's second and eight. I think they need to throw the little, uh, throw the ball a little bit more here. Trying to get the, a few of the out routes, some of the shorter routes in there, but mix it up a little bit. Uh, I don't think you can make a living just trying to run right straight at Kansas every day. Pat Jackson has run for 79 yards so far this afternoon. And on second and eight, let's see what Straw does. He goes back to pass. We find Hernandez at the 35-yard line and a first down for the Wildcats. That was really an excellent timed route. He knew where the receiver was going to be. He had good pass protection. Watch the pass protection. Good timed route. Knows where the receiver is going to make his cut. Fires the ball in there. Tim Hill stopped him defensively at the 35 for Kansas. But it's another first down for the Wildcats. Give to Gallon. He bounces off one tackle, two, three, but Kansas doing a good job game tackling. Jason Grace is the first one to hit him, and pretty much no gain. We'll call it second and nine. It's pretty thick up in the middle there when you've got only one back with no lead blocker and uh, counting on him to get it on his own. Turning into a gorgeous afternoon here in Manhattan. Straw today, 
has been pretty much the way he has been throughout this year in practice. Second and nine from the 36. Draw again to throw. Feeling some pressure now. Steps up into the pocket. Still has it. Fires a pass. Oh! Eric Dillon danced around with it and then goes out of bounds and we have a couple of flags on the play. Might have been a late hit out of bounds. A personal foul against the Jayhawks. What a catch by Eric Gallen. That was a great play by the quarterback. You know, he's scrambling around, changes direction a couple of times. They get a hand on him, and he still comes out of it. And he's still got enough patience and enough uh, pride to sit and look, wait for that thing to come open. And he finds one downfield and gets the ball to him. See what the call is about. And they're walking it off against the Jayhawks. Personal foul called against KU. That's it. Good protection. Then the protection breaks down a little bit. Whoops, I got to go back the other direction. He escapes that tackler. Turns and woo, last minute. Nice throw, nice catch, good concentration. Yeah, and this might be the penalty. Not very smart. He's out of bounds. Late hit. That pushes the ball into Kansas territory at the 39 yard line. Eric Gallen again. Again, not much room there at the line of scrimmage. A good surge by Dan Newbra right at the line. And a pickup of just one at second and nine. Clock is moving under 10 minutes now in this contest. Kansas State Band trying to kick things into gear as their Wildcats are on the move. Smith, who was hit immediately by Daryl Boykin. Not much yardage on the play. It goes down to the 32. That was a good throw. It was right on the money. Good protection again. And he's zipping the ball in there pretty good because the defender is right there. But when you throw the ball with a little zip on it and running the kind of routes that Mike Smith runs, if he puts the ball there and he knows where he's going to be, he'll be able to complete it. With it under nine minutes to go, you figure now Kansas State in two down territory here, third down and three, a long three. Some movement on the part of Kansas State, flags are flying, and the pass from Straw is incomplete. But I think I spotted uh, Patrick Jackson moving a little bit early. I think he did move, but I tell you, that's when you need good protection, and that's when the protection broke down. If he'd had a little more time, just, you know, one more second, boom, he gets the ball there. Now, if you're KU, do you accept this penalty or decline it? Make it a fourth down and four if you decline it, and that's exactly what KU does. You bet. Absolutely, that's the only thing you can do here. Well, Kansas State going for it, figuring, well, a punt might not do them that much good. Kansas wouldn't have great field position at the 33-yard line, and it's too long for a field goal into the win. I think they might go to Mike Smith here, or the tight end. Batted down at the line of scrimmage by Wes Winford, number 58. A guy who played eight-man football last year in Oklahoma. That was a good call. They were going to try to go to the tight end. Al Jones, there it is. Turn, quick pop pass. Batted down, and they get old. They get old Al in a sandwich down there, those two defensive guys. They, uh, they wrapped him up pretty good. But Kansas State will uh, have to cough up the football, and right now down on the turf is Al Jones, the guy that uh, was the intended receiver. He really was sandwiched in there. We're going to step aside with eight and a half minutes left to go in this one. 8.36 to be exact. The Kansas Jayhawks hang on. They lead by four over the Kansas State Wildcats. Eight thirty-six left to go in this contest. Kansas with the football. Maurice Douglas bulls ahead for just a couple, and that's about it. You would think at this juncture that Kansas will 
be happy to try to run as much of the clock as they possibly can. I'm sure they're already thinking ahead to that. Just keep moving the ball, making first down. Uh, if you have to throw it, throw it. But uh, I would imagine they would try to keep it on the ground pretty much of the time unless they just absolutely got to throw it. ASU Stadium here in Manhattan. Pretty much a sellout here between KU and K-State. Tony Sands gains about four on the play up to the 39-yard line. Going to bring up third and a long three. We'll call it third and four. Sands has been the story today for the Kansas Jayhawks. Certainly their offensive star. Now has 30 carries for 172 yards. Kansas State wants to get the football back with a lot of time. They're going to stop him here, but look out! Sands might go all the way! Touchdown! Wow! The second long run of the day for Tony Sands. Well, I tell you what, he had a big hole to run through. It was a very, very well executed play and did a great job with a good spurt. Watch this here. Tony Sands got the ball, makes a good cut inside, good blocking by his offensive line, and he just flat out runs everybody after that. Tony Sands, 62 yards earlier. He had gone 59 yards on a touchdown run. What a huge day. Tony Sands is having two touchdowns, 31 carries, and listen to this, folks, 234 yards. The point after is good. And with 7.19 to go, the Jayhawks have some breathing room. It's Kansas 21, Kansas State 10, and that might have taken the breath out of the Wildcats. Tony Sands has had a great afternoon for the Kansas Jayhawks. His best for KU. Let's take another look again on this third and four situation. Watch the surge up front. Good blocks, good double team by the center and the guard. Tackle turns out. Great job by the tight end. Good cut. Nice run. I'll tell you, that's great. That was, an, that was a team effort right there. That was a team effort. That's how you draw them up on the blackboard, and that's how you want them to work. Every play. Everybody was blocked. Real nice job. Officially 220 yards on 28 carries. Well, he's actually has 31 carries on the day, but two touchdowns for Tony Sands. One of 62 yards, one of 59. And the Jayhawk fans are happy as their Jayhawks now lead by 11, 21 to 10. He probably wears tuxedo to class on Monday, don't you think? Somebody was. Well, they put some meat on that uh, line for Kansas State. Trying to get a good block here. Dick is bobbled by Tyrese Hurd. Now he's got it. And he goes up to the 40 yard line. How about that? Well, all of a sudden, a game that was a defensive struggle for both teams is really opening up. I think he lets the blocks develop here when he when he kind of fumbles the ball, bobbles it, picks it up, and lets those blocks develop. Bang! And all of a sudden, hits the crease. He had a big block there from Chad Faulkner. Here's the reason. Yeah, there here's he the reason. Number he got 70. Three. Watch him. Whoa! He's got him. <laughs> he loves that. He's taking him all the way to the sideline. <laughs> I take him up there to get a hot dog. Draw to throw now. You would expect him to throw it quite often now. Down 11. Michael Smith goes way up in the sky to try to come down with it, and neither he nor the defender for the Kansas Jayhawks, Doug Terry, do. Now the Kansas defense is not going to allow him to get deep. They're going to keep him in front of him all day long. Even if they have to give up something underneath, they're not going to let him get a home run on him right now with seven uh, four left in the fourth quarter. In case you're thinking ahead with us, as far as Tony Sands is concerned, his 220 yards still trails Nolan Cromwell's 294. Now Ranson Rambler 
Ran for 294 yards against Oregon State in 1975. So he's still shy of that mark. Shaw has his pass batted down by David Gordon right at the line of scrimmage. That was a good job by the defense. The offense had great pass protection. He just waited too long. You know, you can only keep him out for just so much time. I know I coach the offensive line, and we try to keep him out all day long, but you just can't do it. The quarterback's got to get rid of it, and if the defense is doing a good job covering those receivers, then he's got to hold a little longer. But the defender came in, got his hands up, knocked the ball down. Third and 10 now, ball at the 40-yard line. Clock stops with 6.59 to go in this one. Again, it makes it doubly tough for Carl Straw as he's looking right into the sun. Across the middle, pass caught. Now that was a great throw. That was a great throw to Mike Smith. Absolutely great. I'll tell you, he throws it. He throws the ball with authority here. Backs out of there, got everything in front of him, zip. Throws it with some zip on it. And a great catch in there by Mike Smith on a crossing route. Real nice job. First down for the Wildcats inside Kansas territory at the 43-yard line. Kansas State with a hurry-up offense now. Straw again to throw. Goes sidelines for Hernandez. He steps out of bounds after a pickup of five on the play at second and five. And again, the clock stops with 6.39 to go. That was a good catch by Hernandez, too. He knew where he was on the field. Knew he had to get his feet inbounds. And... I'm impressed with Carl Straw. I'm impressed with Carl Straw. He throws the ball, boom, a rope. Great job. You can see his feet in there. And both those officials standing there, you know that his feet were in bounds. And remember, in college football, you only need one in. Straw play to Gallon. Gallon might have enough for the first down. He is wrapped up by Roger Robin. I think he fell across, though, the 45 down to the 33-yard line. And this might be close enough to at least measure. What do you think? Let me put the glasses on. I think it's a first down. I'm not going to argue with By you. the nose of the football, I think. I'm not, I'm argue not sure you. on this call, folks. <laughs> well, he just went three out of three. I think. <laughs> <laughs> first on Mason, certainly knowing this one's not over yet. This team trying to hang on now. They lead by 11, but Kansas State's offense has all of a sudden come alive. They're moving the football right down the field. First down for K-State. Clock moving again at 6.25 to go in this one. And the ball at the 33-yard line. There's Hernandez again. And he goes out of bounds. Hassan Bailey forced him out. A pickup of nine on the play inside the 25 down to the 24. I tell you what, good, good throw again. Watch how he throws the ball with authority. Zip. And a good route by the receiver, by Hernandez. Good job. I'm surprised they haven't done this all afternoon. Remember, he's throwing into the wind now, and his passes seem to have more zip into the wind than they did with the wind. Absolutely. I tell you, he is a good quarterback. There's no doubt about it. And he's getting good protection from his offensive line, even though he's throwing those quick passes. They're still keeping him out and keeping their hands down. Matt Jackson goes wide to the right. So Smith and Hernandez are at the left. That pass caught by Smith. He goes down to the two-yard line. <laughs> Great play. Great play. Hassan Bailey again forced him out, but a great catch by number 88, Michael Smith. Watch Michael Smith. He's on the left side of your screen at the top, and you know darn good and well the straw's looking for him all the way. The defender fell down. He got in between the corner and the safety and tried to hit that seam right along the sideline. Stop the clock with 6.06 to go. First and goal from the two. To Jackson. He is stopped short of the goal line. Roger Robin was in there defensively for Kansas State, along with Wes Swinford. They're going to mark it at the one, and the clock moves. And there's a flag on the play. Well, they did stuff. That's this. Boom. Okay, that's a, that's a heck of a hit right there, and they piled it up pretty tight in there. The offensive line didn't come off with quite the surge that they needed to. Offsides against Kansas. 
So it'll still be first down. They'll move it half the distance to the goal, which is pretty much the, what they gained anyway, but they don't have to lose the down. Eric Gallon, the lone back. To Gallon. He tries to fall over the right side, but nothing doing. Boykin was there along with Roger Robin for KU. I'll tell you, the defensive surge here is pretty good. They're not letting that offensive line knock them back at, back at all. They're standing them up, straightening them up. Watch this. Boom. Knocking people around inside, letting those linebackers move and flow to the football. Good defensive play by Kansas. Second and goal, still from the one. Seems to be some confusion as to who should be in the game for the Wildcats, and now Carl Straw is forced to take a timeout. There seemed to be all kinds of confusion as to who should be in, who shouldn't be in, in that goal line situation. Pat Jackson was going in and out from the sidelines. He was running for the sidelines when Straw looked back and called the timeout. That was a heads-up play by the junior quarterback as he comes over now to talk to his coach, Bill Snyder. Hi, those of you in the Rocky Mountain region can catch D. Dowis and the Air Force Falcons in action against the Army Black Knights next Saturday, live at 1 Central, 12 o'clock Mountain. Join Drew Goodman and Tom Graham on Prime Sports Network, an affiliate of Prime Network. Clock is stopped here with 5.17 to go. Kansas leading 21 to 10. Kansas State certainly threatening, though. It is second and goal with the ball at the one, maybe the one and a half yard line. What do you call here, Coach? Well, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't try those last two plays that they were planning inside. I, I think that, uh, I think maybe a little option play on the goal line is always good, especially when you're, when you're uh, looking at a defense like Kansas has got inside. They're very big, very physical, very strong, and they haven't gotten that surge that they need to get. But I think a little option play that you could pop outside might work. Let's see what Bill Snyder calls on second and goal from the one. Pat Jackson, the lone setback for the Wildcats. The pitch is to Jackson. He cuts it inside. Touchdown! That was a quick pitch. He even lined up to the left side of the ball. And they just quick crossed it outside. Blocked pretty good up front. Let him make a cut inside. I think this is all Jackson here. Boom. Good pitch. There's some pretty good blocking, but watch his cut. Bang, up inside, and he gets it right on his own. He cut it inside of West Swinford and avoided the would-be tackler of Roger Robin into the end zone for Pat Jackson from one yard out. And now Kansas State looks to go for two here. Two points here and a field goal would tie. Not a bad move because one point really does you no good at this point. No, it really doesn't. And then a touchdown would win if you miss anyway. So. Throw on the keeper. He won't make it. Ball is batted away. It goes out of bounds, and the two-point conversion fails for Kansas State, but they get on the board with 5.13 to go in this one. Here's a two-point conversion. Quarterback Straw coming out with a football. He's going to try to run it in all the way, and he doesn't get a block inside. Doesn't get a block inside on Boykin. So 21-16. Now if you're Kansas State... Do you onside kick, or with 5-13, do you let your defense try to uh, hold them? Well, I'll tell you what, I might just gamble. I might just go onside kick here. You have 5-13, but, uh, you know, the last two times. We'll take another look at that touchdown run from Pat Jackson. Nice pitch out. Good pitch. Good blocking up front, but he gets it on his own. He's... He's quick enough, and he's got good movement, able to the ability to cut quickly. Kansas has a lot of guys with good hands up on the front line anticipating some sort of an onside kick. You bet. I believe I would go onside kick right here and an opportunity to get the ball back and win the game, even though there's five minutes and 13 seconds left. Kansas has nine guys within 15 yards of the football. Or they could try a deep onside, Dave, where they drop it in the hole on either side right here since they've got all the people up to the front anticipating an onside kick. You could get it back that way. They're going to go ahead and kick it away. A low kick that 
Frank Hatchett has. And he brings it back up to the 33 yard line. Kansas State, an impressive, quick scoring drive. 60 yards in just two minutes and six seconds. They saw a little bit at the goal line and maybe wasted 30 or 40 seconds there, but still a good drive for the Wildcats to pull within five with 5.09 to go. Trying to see who that is for Kansas State down on the field. Can't spot a number. Looks like Eric Harper, their outstanding strong safety out of Denison, Texas. A man that Kansas State calls King with a good reason. He really is just a truly outstanding athlete. You know, I think part of the reason that Kansas hasn't thrown much against them is because they do have one real good asset in their secondary, the fact that they've got uh, three seniors in their secondary and one freshman in C.J. Masters. Beginning this Friday, it's the new Senior Pro Baseball League featuring former Major League Baseball players over the age of 35, including Jose Cruz, Greg Nettles, Paul Blair, and Bernie Carbo. Join Tommy Hutton and Gary Carter for exciting baseball action beginning this Friday, live at 6.30 Central, 5.30 Mountain on Prime Network. We'll have an opportunity to watch Eric Harper, number six, come in. And he made the hit, he made the tackle, and then Harper just now got up and he's being held. I think he's just a little bit groggy. Something that is good to see from a defensive standpoint for Eric Harper is that he was walking off the field. It was not a leg type injury. That's what you fear the most. Kansas State's defense is going to have to hold, trying to get the football back. Down by five. Crowd starting to get into it here at KSU Stadium. Sands with not much room. A few grains of sand go across the 35 to the 36, but a gain of only two. Hey, Ramon Davenport did a good job along with the rest of that front five there for Kansas State and stuffing everything up inside. There was, there was pretty thick up in there that time. 222 yards on the ground for Tony Sands today. That's a personal best for him. His previous best was against Oklahoma State, 177 yards. It's a game to Sands. He is tripped up on a great defensive play with a guy that was just down, Eric Harper. Harper back in, and he made an outstanding defensive play for the Wildcats. Great play. I tell you, he did a great job of tackling there in pursuit. The whole defense pursued from the inside out. Watch this. Cross sweep. Tony Sands dangerous with the ball in his hand. Good blocking by the offensive line, but a great play. Big third down play, play here. Third and five from the 40. Donahoe trying to draw the Wildcats off. The Sam, Sam has it, but he's going to be stuck. Elijah Alexander was the guy that got him for a big loss. You know, it looked like they were trying to throw the flea flicker or it was a busted play. I mean, it looked like they were going to try to pitch it back to him and then let the, and let Sands throw it back to the quarterback. But it, it must have been a busted play. The fullback got in the way of the pitch back to Sands, and Sands had to eat the football. B.J. Lowson, a low one. Michael Smith has it at the 25. Dances ahead to the 38. Good field position for the Wildcats and still a lot of time left. 3.06 to go in this one. We'll come back with a final moment from KSU Stadium where the Wildcats are trying to come from behind to upset the Jayhawks. We'll be right back. First and 10 for the Wildcats at the 38-yard line. Cross pass Hernandez is complete. He goes out of bounds near midfield. A first down for Kansas State. Okay, those timing routes are great for, with Straw and Hernandez because he runs a perfect route and the ball is gone before he gets there. Watch this. Perfect throw. Bang. Good catch. Get to the sideline. Hernandez now with... Five catches for 46 yards. Bill Snyder trying to call the right play. His quarterback, Carl Straw, has called a few of his own number, 17 of 28 for 178 yards in the air. 
First down for the Wildcats. Eric Gallon on the draw play. Not much doing there. Pick up though of four. And the clock is running with 2.50 to go in the contest. Wes Swinford stopped him. And the hurry up offense for Kansas State. It's second and six. Ball with a deep drop. He hits his tight end, Al Jones. Jones close to a first down. I think he's got it. They might have to measure here, and that'll stop the clock as they come over with the six. That'll allow Kansas State team to uh, get set up something offensively. Absolutely. I'll tell you, that was an excellent play call there because they got everybody flushing out of their deep and hit the tight end underneath. And Al Jones did a good job of catching it, tried to turn up with the ball, and a good throw again by the quarterback. I tell you, Straw is doing an excellent job of putting some zip on the ball and getting it in there quickly. By the nose of the football, another first down for the Wildcats. Did you call that one? And not not for right, good. Okay. I not thought, it, I thought you were going to go four for four. <laughs> <laughs> 2.28 to go in this one. Bill Snyder looking over his play chart to see what to call here. Kansas State still with two of their timeouts. They had to use one in the last touchdown drive. Smith goes in motion. Straw, quick drop. Quarterback keeper. He runs it down close to another first down to the 31 yard line. That was that quarterback draw again, and that was an excellent play call. An excellent play call because he is a good runner also. But they're anticipating pass, and rather than give it to the back on the draw, the quarterback steps back, and he takes off with it. A nine-yard gain at second and one. The ball to 31. Straw audibilizing as they go. Soft pass out. This tight end, Al Jones. Jones fumbles the football, but they're saying it's down. It's a first down for Kansas State at the 27-yard line. That was good by the tight end. What he's trying to do, he tried to reach out and extend the ball. He tried to extend the ball and get more yardage with it, and the ball came loose, and he was already down. But a good touch pass by Straw. He's shown the ability to touch it, and he's also shown the ability to really fire it in there. 142 left to go in this one. First down for the Wildcats. Flag comes in. It might be holding against K-State. Straw is scrambling now. He gets rid of it. There he is, Michael Smith out of bounds. Close to another first down, but I think it's going to be a holding penalty against K-State. And it looks like Carl Straw was hit hard. He is still down for Kansas State. See, the pass protection broke down a little bit at the end, but he's looking. Receivers are covered. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> he just has got to get away and got hit at the last minute when he let the ball go. you got to give the offensive line credit. I say they have done an excellent job of protecting Straw today. They've had breakdowns just a couple of times, but uh, overall, I think they've done a real fine job of protecting the passer. The backup quarterback for Kansas State is warming up over on the sidelines. That's number 14, Paul Watson, out of Kansas City, Missouri. He has thrown the ball effectively this year for Kansas State. Many thought he might be the starting quarterback with Gary Swim going out in uh, the spring drills, but Carl Straw has been the quarterback for Kansas State. It is a holding call against the Wildcats, and we'll see what happens with Carl Straw, whether he'll be able to continue. This would be a big blow for Bill Snyder and his Wildcats because Straw has certainly found his rhythm. He's checking on his quarterback. And now he will probably motion something over to the sideline. Straw getting up slowly. Might have had just the wind knocked out of him. He got hit in the upper body around the shoulders. Uh, There's Paul Watson over on the sideline. Now he will probably at least run one play, maybe more. We'll find out. Carl Straw is now kind of groggily going over to the sideline. 124 left to go. What a tough situation for Paul Watson to walk into. I'll tell you what. 
Watson seems to be fired up. He wants to take those Wildcats in there. Well, I'll tell you what, you pray for things, not for somebody to get hurt, but for your opportunity to get in and be able to take the team down and score in a situation like this. It's like when you're a kid in the backyard. All right, I'm coming in with 124 to go. We're down to the Kansas Jayhawks by five. I get a chance to take my team in. Let's see what happens. First and 20, ball back at the 37-yard line. Watson escapes pressure. Watson now wants to run with the football, trying to get out of bounds, and he does after a pickup of only five. And that took 10 seconds off the clock. It stopped with 1.14 to go. Watson ran right over to his Kansas State sidelines where he has a conversation with his coach. That's a good job of defense by Kansas. They had everybody covered and uh, forced him to run with the football. And I'll tell you, those receivers running those deep routes now, you know they've got to be in good shape right now to be able to come back time after time after time and run 30 and 40 yard pass off. Remember the Wildcats still have two timeouts remaining. It's second and 15, the ball at the 33 yard line. Watson with lots of time. His pass behind his intended receiver, Eric Gallon. It's going to be third and long. Good coverage by the secondary of the Kansas Jayhawks. On the play, number 84, New he might not be warmed up. You know, you're on the sideline waiting. You only have two minutes left in the game, and all of a sudden you're called on, and you got to throw a few quick balls. You just don't have that touch. It's like a baseball pitcher. You know, you got to warm up and stay in the bullpen there. Turned into a gorgeous, sunshiny afternoon in Manhattan at KSU Stadium. The Wildcats trying to come from behind on the Jayhawks. Trailing by five, just over a minute to go. Watson on a draw. Get a long way to go for the first down. He's close. Two yards shy, stopped at the 20-yard line. Now we'll see if Kansas State uses a timeout. Going to bring up fourth down and two. Will Kansas State call a timeout or... Right now, they have a player with a helmet off. That's their tight end, Al Jones. And now, they do take a timeout. Kansas State will talk things over. This is the biggest play of the contest. It'll be fourth and a long two of the ball at the 20-yard line. 58 seconds to go. Imagine yourself, put yourself in the shoes of Paul Watson. He's been standing over the, on the sidelines watching this one all afternoon. Carl Straw goes down with under two minutes to go. You required to come in and run the offense, and not only that, but you're faced with a first and 20 when you come in. That's a difficult situation for anybody, regardless of what kind of experience you've had. But I think probably the most important thing is the fact that he's cold. You know, he has not thrown the ball a whole lot since halftime and gets a few tosses, but uh, he's still not really warm enough to go in and throw the football. Watson's one toss so far behind his intended receiver, Eric Gallon. He's run the ball twice. Those two games for 14 yards. But he's still a long two short of the first down on fourth down. The pictures will tell the story. Watson will be stopped short. Roger Robin wrapped him up. And it appears that Kansas will hold. Len Mason with some final words of instruction to Kelly Donahoe and the defense holds. Well, they bent, but they did not break. Lance Flashbarth, the sophomore out of Lawrence, also in on the stop there. A big play defensively for the Kansas Jayhawks on the quarterback draw from Paul Watson, who maybe picked up a yard, but that was all. In fact, he might have lost a little bit. Ball now at the 22-yard line, and you would anticipate Kansas just trying to run out the clock. And that's exactly what they're going to try to do. Kansas State with just one timeout remaining, and they'll use it here. That was a valiant effort at the end there. And, uh, fortunately, uh, losing straw right in the middle of that drive really hurt uh, the Kansas State Wildcats. And not to take anything away from uh, the University of Kansas because they tightened up when they had to at the end and prevented uh, the first down with fourth and two. 
And uh, of course had the excellent offense all afternoon. They've done a heck of a job of moving the ball on the ground. Meanwhile, we have a second. I want to thank our producer director, Mike Diamond, today. Also our associate director, Rudy Kuzma. Our spotters today, Sergio Lopez and Sean Opat. And our statistician did an outstanding job for us today. And he's been trying to follow those numbers as Tony Sands has been racking it up. Mike May, thanks so much. Also, all the rest of the fine, fine crew here in Manhattan. You've all done an outstanding job bringing you the pictures here from KSU Stadium. A loss of five on the play, but that's really academic right now. There'll be a couple of more Donahoe knee drops, and that'll pretty much do it. Kansas will go out of here with another victory against the Kansas State Wildcats. Last year, they won by 18 in Lawrence. This year, much tighter, and they knew they were in a ball game the entire way. Neither team led by more than seven. Kansas State never did have the lead. They were tied at 7-all, but that's as close as they have come. And you see the clock winding down. The big guy offensively for the Kansas Jayhawks, certainly the rushing of Tony Sands. Sands, 34 carries, 216 yards, and that was after a big loss of 8 yards on the last time that he carried it. So Tony Sands with two touchdowns rushing, one from 62 yards, the other from 59 yards, and he is our offensive star of the game, and Glenn Mason now can applaud as he knows his Jayhawks will beat the Kansas State Wildcats for the second consecutive year. And for Mason, he is undefeated as a coach against the Wildcats. He's won the state championship, the Governor's Trophy, the bragging rights, and all that goes with this interstate rivalry. The Governor's Trophy will stay in Lawrence. The Kansas Jayhawks defeat the Kansas State Wildcats 21-16. I'll tell you, what a great afternoon, though. Can't take anything away from the Kansas State offense. Carl Straw, Mike Smith, Frank Hernandez, I'll tell you, Matt Jackson. They did an excellent job. Kansas wins by five, 21-16, our final here from KSU Stadium in Manhattan. We'll come back with some closing comments in just a moment. It's a sunshiny afternoon now in Manhattan after six inches of rain overnight. And the Kansas State Wildcats fall five points short of defeating the Kansas Jayhawks. The Kansas Jayhawks retain the Governor's Trophy for the second straight year as they defeat Kansas State 21 to 16 in a big fourth down play as Paul Watson was stopped on a quarterback draw. Big hit inside there defensively. Roger Robin also in there defensively. Gary Otis, a junior college transfer out of Coffeyville, number 78. Lance Flashbarth also in there, a native of Lawrence, Kansas. And the Kansas Jayhawks hold on to win 21 to 16 here this afternoon at KSU Stadium in Manhattan. Trophy defeating the Kansas State Wildcats 21-16. Tony Sands, the outstanding day, 34 carries, 217 yards, and two touchdowns. And again, KU wins by five over K-State. My thanks to Gene Hoshaver and the rest of the fine crew here in Manhattan for their outstanding work as KU defeats K-State by five. Join us next week. The Kansas State Wildcats take on the Iowa State Cyclones. Today's game has been a presentation of Prime Network.